So uh, I have a little brother that I live with. I don't I don't talk about him much because I don't really want a bunch of attention on him. Uh, but for the purpose of the story, I'm gonna name him Clevin. And uh, Clevin is seven years younger than me. So pretty much w younger than me to the point where uh, we weren't really ever like friends growing up. It was more of a older brother, little brother relationship, you know? He was seven years younger than me. So when I was about 13, he was six. And, uh, you know, as a 13-year-old, I was not exactly dying to hang out with my six-year-old brother. Call me crazy here, but six-year-olds are not exactly a beacon of fun entertainment, you know? You're 13, you're like, let's go light a firecracker in Old Man Jenkins' mailbox and then light our butts on fire. And your brother's like, I want to watch Backyardigans. Like, you know, you, you just really couldn't hang out that well. And uh, my parents kind of knew that we weren't super good friends. I think that makes sense. And uh, also, 13-year-old boys are dramatically immature, okay? Like, listen, 13-year-old boys are the uh, maturity equivalent of a raccoon digging through the trash can, you know? Like, we look like we got it together, but at the end of the day, we're still digging through a trash can. And you can never trust somebody just digging through a trash can. So my parents obviously thought that I was not mature enough to babysit my little brother. And this made me really upset because I was 13 years old, okay? And I thought that at 13, I was ready to babysit my brother. So anyways, they would go out and they would always get a babysitter, which which just annoyed me, you know, because I thought I was old enough to handle my brother, which in retrospect, I definitely wasn't. 13 year old boys are an absolute train wreck who couldn't babysit a fly, let alone a child, all right? Like I would not trust myself to babysit my brother when I was 13, I and mean, my parents did the right thing here. However, they would hire babysitters that were only like six months older than me, and that's where it got really embarrassing, okay? Like imagine the cute girl from eighth grade that you think is really dope, you know, coming over to your house when you're in seventh grade, and you just have to sit there and be like, oh my god, and my parents hired a babysitter and I know her like that That's a pretty awkward situation that I was being put in and for some reason my parents would always have to hire a babysitter That I knew like when I knew someone it encouraged them to hire them even though I asked them not to plenty of times So for about two months we get these babysitters and I mean I always knew them But I never really had a crush on them, you know, like I was like, oh man, you're uh, you're you're Donovan's older sister or your Donovan's sister this is weird but it was never like oh my gosh you're cute and this is embarrassing you know it was just always a little bit awkward and that was until they hired Megan okay and that's not her real name but Megan was a girl that I had a crush on my entire seventh grade year she was an eighth grader and uh, I thought she was drop dead gorgeous at the time you know I had the biggest crush on her that's humanly possible so when my parents told her or told me that she was going to be babysitting me, I, of course, had an absolute panic attack because I did not want to be embarrassed and have her think that I'm some little kid who needs a babysitter, all right? I had a massive crush on this girl. So whatever, she comes over and we get introduced and it's this awkward, I know who you are, you know who I am, our thing, and I am our, uh, Jesus, I don't even know what I'm saying. Anyways, she knows who I am, I know who she is, so obviously it's this little awkward back and forth, we're pretending not to know each other, and my parents leave, and uh, we're just kind of hanging out and we really hit it off and I'm shocked you know this is supposed to be my babysitter this girl's supposed to be sitting on babies and uh, all of a sudden we're getting along we're having a great time we're talking we're flirting a little bit you know how it is young scrubby's putting on the moves bruh like we were making pizzas in the oven and I said the only thing hotter in this room is you like I had the moves okay everybody was basically just chanting in the background Ryan Ryan uh, no one was chanting because we were me and my little brother were the only people there But of course, you know, that's how it goes and my brother being six He goes to bed at around uh, 9 p.m. And my parents weren't gonna be home till midnight which meant for three hours Me and this girl were basically gonna be uh, home alone, you know, and I was like hey, yo, tonight's gone great um, Everything's been fantastic. This girl's been flirting with me. Here's my chance. I gotta make my move so my brother goes to bed and um, she asks me if I want to watch a movie and I'm like, yes, babysitter, I would love to watch a movie. As my babysitter, I am required by law to listen to everything that you say. Uh, I didn't say that, you know, but I was playing along like, yeah, sure, no big deal. But in my head, I'm like, yeah, yeah, let's watch this movie, girl. I'm about to put the moves on so hard, all right? I'm about to count some shoulders out here. One, two, three. Oh, is my arm around you? Uh, that's so sad. Guess I'll just leave it there. I was ready to put on the moves. But I'm acting like not excited, you know? I'm acting like, yeah, man, I don't, I don't even care, all right? Like, first of all, I'm really nervous because um, this girl is my babysitter. She is being paid to hang out here. So, yes, it is quite bizarre, quite bizarre bizarre that I'm about to hit on her and put the moves on that is making me really really nervous like you know and, and I don't know why because we were flirting all night we were having a good time but uh, for some reason I'm like freaking out 
So whatever, we sit down and we're watching a movie and we're on like opposite ends of the couch at first. But then she says, she's like, oh, do you mind if I come closer? I'm like, no, 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 not at all. And uh, she had a blanket on. She like puts the blanket over me and her and like puts her head on my shoulder. And I'm like, oh my God, this is it. This is it. You know, seventh grade me is basically getting ready to tell all of my friends on Xbox Live as soon as I get on that I actually somehow manage to hook up with the babysitter, okay? You know, 13-year-old me is jumping for joy, basically like I just won a free warhead at Old Navy or whatever. Like, I am hyped right now. So here I am, making out with my babysitter on the couch, like an absolute savage. You know, I'm pretty sure I drank 47 monsters and had and renamed myself Kyle for the amount of savagery that was going on on in this situation so uh we're making out and it feels like we're making out for about 20 minutes and then i hear the garage door open you know like i hear the garage door open and i'm like hey my parents are home i'm gonna pretend to be asleep that way they don't think anything's going on and uh, i'll see you at school i'll see well it was summertime so i'm like i'll see you when i see you you know come back over she lived in our neighborhood so i knew we could hang out i was like yo this is dope not only did i get a babysitter i got a girlfriend so uh she gets paid. My mom paid this girl to make out with me. She didn't know it at the time, all right? My mom didn't walk in like, oh, were you guys just making out? Here's your money, you know? But, um, eh, eh, you know, she, she kind of did get paid to make out with me, and that's called capitalism. That's how you know you have a good job, all right? So, uh, whatever. The next day, my mom's kind of like, what did you think about her as a babysitter? And I'm like, ah, you know, she was great. Reese really liked her. Uh, I just said my brother's name. Clevin. Clevin really liked her. And my mom is basically saying that she's going to invite her back. And I'm like, yo, A1 steak sauce, baby, let's go. Everybody knows that I'm about to make out with this girl every friday when you and dad are gone it's gonna be lit my summer is gonna be iconic all right every friday i'm gonna hop on xbox live play some minecraft and be like boys listen i just made out with this chick it was sick you know so i'm getting hyped i'm ready to go i'm like yeah, yeah, yeah. invite her back every day we don't you guys don't even need to be gone just invite her over like whenever so uh me and her start hanging out a ton uh, outside of uh, the house obviously she starts babysitting basically every friday and it goes as follows we would hang out with my brother until he fell asleep and then we would make out until my parents got home like that was the formula that was the system and i loved the system okay i never wanted it to end <laughs> if they could have lived like this forever i would have you know but in reality here i am a 13 year old boy making out with a girl that i thought was really hot obviously i was going to be hyped you know i, I was excited but, you know, all good things can't last forever. All good things must come to an end. And what happened next was the most depressing moment of my young 13-year-old life. So, uh, one night, me and this babysitter are making out. You know, we're having a good time. We're out here really double-dabbing, high-fiving, doing all the, the fancy tricks. And uh, we've been doing it for about a month now. So, obviously, things are getting a little bit more progressive. And at one point, the top has come off if you're picking up what I'm putting down. If we're playing baseball, I'm standing on second, if you know what I mean. And uh, I guess I just was so in the moment that I didn't hear the garage door open because the next thing I hear is, ahem, excuse me? And I turn around and sure enough, my mother is standing there looking at me, making out with the girl she's been paying to come over here every week with her shirt off. And uh, at this moment, I basically know that everything good and holy that has ever happened in my life is over. Because there is no way my mother is going to let this continue. So she uh, very politely tells the girl to go home, pays her for her babysitting duties, and then uh, sits me down and asks me how long this has been going on. And I figure that it's not a good idea to lie. So I tell her, and my mom is just like, you know... I'm very disappointed in you, Ryan. And you know what, Mom? You might have been disappointed. I know you watch these videos. I don't care. I don't give a shit. Because I made out with that chick, and it was lit, and you ruined it. And that's not dope. But at the same time, I shouldn't have lied about it. I agree. No one's dope in this situation. 0% dope being spread around the table. Uh, I got in a ton of trouble, though. Like, after my mom told me she's disappointed, I got grounded. I had to pay them back all the money they paid her while they were babysitting because my mom felt so weird about paying this girl to make out with her son. So I had to mow lawns and do work around the house all summer to pay back my parents for this babysitter. On top of that, from then on... I had to babysit my brother. Zero out of ten wouldn't recommend. Yes, I said I was mad about it at the beginning. I had to babysit a kid now. It was just it was just not pleasant. Zero out of ten experience. Uh, and beyond that, my mom proceeded to tell every one of my relatives about it. So here I am getting chewed out by every relative ever about how disgusting I am for making out with my babysitter, blah, blah, blah. And you know what? To everybody who yelled at me, I was a 13-year-old boy and a girl wanted to make out with me, okay? I did what I had to do. I did what every 13-year-old boy would do in this situation. It's not disgusting. It's called puberty. So yeah, the rest of my summer was basically me mowing lawns to pay back my parents and getting yelled at by every older relative who thought it was somehow weird that I wanted to make out with a girl. Like, my bad, guys didn't know 13 year old boys liked women sorry didn't mean to do that as for me and the girl 
Uh, we ended up dating for like a month or two after this, and uh, then she was kind of going crazy, and uh, now she's a crazy ex-girlfriend story, which, you know what, if this video gets 30,000 likes, I'll tell the story of how this girl uh, was a crazy ex-girlfriend of mine. We can do that, alright? Well, let's do that. Let's do something juicy. However, that's how my, uh, my, my babysitter got me in trouble, you know? I really had to pay back my parents for all the babysitting. Zero out of ten would not recommend and got yelled at for a summer. But, uh, making out was definitely worth it. Ten out of ten would recommend. My first real experience I had with this babysitter that I remember is when I was around four years old. Like I said, he was my neighbor and he was around 15 at the time. And uh, he came over while my parents were gone. And at one point, after hanging out with me for a while, watching TV, making me dinner, all that stuff, he told me that we were going to play hide and seek. But I had to be a real good hider and I would probably be hiding for a very long time. So I was like, bet, dude, I'm ready. I'm ready to play. I love hide and seek. I thought I was just going to be playing games with this cool babysitter that was new and definitely wanted to hang out with me. And uh, uh, in my house, we have this closet under the stairs that has a bunch of room in it, kind of like a Harry Potter closet, and there's a bunch of toys and boxes in there, and uh, that, that was my favorite hiding place. And I ended up finding this out later when I would tell my parents about this when I was like 14 years old, but they told him that was my favorite hiding spot. So if we were playing hide and seek to let me hide there for a little before finding me just because little kids like to be good at things, you know, and I was only about four years old. So I go into the closet, I hide behind some boxes, and I start waiting for uh, my, my babysitter to come find me because he probably promised me that we were going to be playing hide and seek and who lies to a four year old am I right? So here I am lying in the closet behind these boxes waiting for my babysitter to come find me and I hear the door rustling and me being a four year old I'm like oh this is going to be lit boys oh there's no way he's going to find me I am the god at hide and seek I am untouchable I am Sly Cooper I am invisible I am Iron Man and so I'm just minding my business really expecting my babysitter to burst through the door any minute and uh 10 minutes passed probably or at least felt like 10 minutes and, and he still hasn't come in there was just fidgeting at the door and that was it and uh it, it's not dark in there there is a light in there so i'm not like freaking out or anything even though at the time i was pretty afraid of the dark but i am stuck in a tiny closet with just a couple toys right so i go to open the door because i'm like hey man you haven't found me in 10 minutes you're kind of bad at this game you little poop shoot and the door won't open there's no lock on the door but i'm pushing on it and it's not working at all like the door just isn't budging and then that's when i hear it a voice i didn't recognize and it was a girl's voice and she's saying my babysitter's name who i'm gonna name daniel for the purpose of the story because I feel like this is a douchey name and this guy just locked a four-year-old in a closet so he's kind of the king douche like if there was a douche kingdom this guy would be the douche king okay so they're talking and uh, I start to hear noises that definitely isn't a normal conversation that's all I'm gonna say because I like to stay monetized and Susan's kind of edgy lately but I'm banging on the door I'm a four-year-old by the way banging on the door trying to get out because this douche canoe locked a four-year-old in the closet I'm banging on the door he's banging something else if you guys know what I mean and I'm stuck and I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna die in the closet. Holy cow, he's being kidnapped by a group of female ninjas that love to scream. But regardless, about 20 minutes later, she leaves and uh, the, the door opens and he's like, oh my gosh, I, I didn't know how to get the door open. I was trying so hard. And I'm like, listen here, Daniel, I might be four years old, but I wasn't born yesterday. Four years old is four years, mister. You think I'm stupid? I've seen Shark Week four times at this point. I have plenty of knowledge on absolutely everything, all right? And uh, that's when I notice a dining room chair that is suddenly near the door door. This guy had propped a door underneath the closet handle so I couldn't get out just to bring his girlfriend over. And you know what? If he would have just turned on the PS2 upstairs and just been like, yo, play a video game, I probably would have been fine. But Douche Canoe really had to lock me in a closet. Douche Canoe Daniel, that's his official nickname. But whatever, he promises me that if I don't tell my mom and dad about the closet situation that he'll give me an Otter Pop. And you know, I'm four years old, so I'm like, I right, bet that's a fair trade. Uh, I mean, being locked in the closet kind of sucked, but it wasn't that that bad and I'm gonna get an otter pop out of it I'll take these odds any day of the week so I let Daniel off the hook this time all right otter pops can buy my silence almost as much as money and I've been paid off by quite a few mafia members at this point to keep my silence but regardless uh, I don't tell my parents that he locked me in the closet which I probably should have done but you're four years old a cool kid who's older than you and likes to hang out with you and play hide and seek where he locks you in a closet tells you to keep your mouth shut you kind of just keep your mouth shut it was really stupid in retrospect I don't know what I was thinking but douche canoe Daniel really had 
had a way with convincing me not to tell anyone. But it wouldn't be the last time Douche Canoe Daniel used my four-year-old naivety to uh, his advantage. The next time he babysat me, it somehow got worse. And I know what you're thinking. How could it possibly get worse than locking a toddler in the closet? But it did. You see, I guess Douche Canoe Daniel didn't like how much money my parents were paying him because uh, I was playing PS2 Sly Cooper, which is in my parents' room, and uh, my parents' closet was basically I could see it from where I was playing PS2, right? And I'm looking down the hallway, and I see Douche Canoe Daniel kind of going through my mom's stuff, uh, especially near where they keep their money. And, and, and four-year-old me obviously didn't put two and two together, but I asked Daniel, I said, hey man, what are you doing? And he goes, oh, I'm just reorganizing your mom's jewelry. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that makes perfect sense, Douche Canoe Daniel. Plenty of babysitter teenage boys rearrange middle-aged women's jewelry. That's a common trend. I know plenty of people who do exactly that, because four-year-olds are stupid, okay? Babies are just drunk people. Little, little drunk people. I mean, think about it. I wasn't a baby by any means, but I was still really short. I couldn't walk very well. I really sucked with my words. I was basically just a drunk person. Babies are just drunk people. And I just kind of let it slide. I didn't think about it. But uh, anyways, Daniel keeps rummaging through my parents' room and comes back. And I don't think anything of it because I'm four years old and I'm playing PS2. And I don't really understand people who would steal things yet. Like, that concept was still kind of rare to me. For some reason, when you're four years old, you believe in the good of everybody around you. And you're not sitting there going, yeah, this babysitter's probably stealing stuff from my parents. It's just not a thought that's crossing your mind every 30 seconds. And later that night before my parents got home, I ended up spilling my chocolate milk all over the carpet, which I wasn't supposed to have the drink on anyways. And Daniel was like, hey man, hey man, don't even worry about it. Like you're good. Don't sweat it. Everything's fine. I won't tell your mom and dad. And so here I am being like, yo, douche canoe Daniel's actually a cool dude. He's not going to snitch on me for spilling my chocolate milk. And my mom would have been pissed if she found out that I had chocolate milk on the carpet where I wasn't supposed to have it. So he cleans up the milk. You can't tell it was there. And I'm like, oh my God, Douche Canoe Daniel is literally magic. He's a wizard. He's Harry Potter in the flesh. I've never seen anyone clean up chocolate milk with such grace, such poise, such fantastic talent at getting dairy out of a carpet. Wow. Douche Canoe Daniel has a talent. And it should have been telling to me that the only thing he's ever been good at is cleaning up chocolate milk. But whatever, my parents and me, uh, we're, we're just kind of hanging out, and, and my mom comes in the next day, and she's talking to my dad, and I overhear him, and she's talking about how she can't find her earrings, the earrings that my dad just bought her for their 10-year uh, wedding anniversary, and how she's freaking out, they're tearing the house apart, and they're like, well, maybe it was Daniel, maybe it was Daniel. So they call Daniel over, and they don't tell him what they're going to do. They go into the other room to talk to Daniel's parents about it, because they all came over, because when, you know, your, your son might have stolen diamond earrings, it's a little important to talk to the parents of the 15-year-old. And he comes over to me, and I'm pretty sure at this point he knew what was coming, because he tells me that if my mom and dad ask what we did, we played Sly Cooper together, and I never left your sight, okay? And I bring up the fact that he had gone into the closet, and he threatens me and basically says that if I tell them that he went into the mom and dad's closet, or my mom and dad's closet, that he's going to tell them that I spilt chocolate milk all over the carpet and I wasn't supposed to have chocolate milk, and they'd be really, really, really mad at me for doing that. And, you know, I'm four, so I'm like, yeah, you're right, dude. They probably would be pissed that I had chocolate milk. Gee, thanks, douche canoe Daniel. You're right. I won't tell on you because you won't tell on me. But let me put this in perspective for you, okay? He's blackmailing a four-year-old. What type of terrible person does this? This guy is basically this teenage Hitler blackmailing a four-year-old to not not snitch on him for stealing his mom's earrings. What a terrible, terrible person. So my mom and dad come in and they're like, hey, uh, you know, what's up, douche canoe Daniel? Did you, did you take her earrings? You know, be honest with us. We won't be mad. And he goes, no, no. I spent the whole night hanging out with Ryan, huh, Ryan? And I said, yeah, yeah, douche canoe Daniel never left my side because I didn't want to get in trouble for the chocolate milk, right? And when you're four years old, you really don't understand the gravity of someone stealing from your parents. You just don't. At least I didn't, okay? I was pretty sheltered as a kid. I didn't really understand what was going going on and what I was lying to cover up. So Douche Canoe Daniel isn't in trouble. He gets away with stealing my mom's earrings, and, and you might be thinking there's no way it can get worse. But trust me, trust me, ladies and gentlemen, there is a situation that gets much, much, much worse. So just for the recap, so far, he locked a four-year-old in the closet, stole the four-year-old's mom's earrings, and then blackmailed the four-year-old into lying for him to cover up. So this is the last story I'm going to do for today's video, but it's probably the longest one. Um, basically, one night my parents asked Douche Canoe Daniel to come over 
over and stay really late with me. We're talking probably 1, 1 30 in the morning type of flow, you know, which is, which is pretty late for a babysitter. You know, it is, it's one of those things where like, yeah, it's probably not fun to sit with a four year old until one in the morning, but if you're getting paid to do it and you agreed to do it, you, you kind of have to, you don't have an option. Like if you didn't want to babysit till one in the morning, don't say yes. But I guess douche canoe Daniel never got the memo of how to say no, because, uh, Basically, what happened is, is around midnight, I'm still awake. He gave me way too much sugar, way too many Otter Pops, way too many chocolate milks, and I'm on a sugar high equivalent to Wiz Khalifa and Bob Marley's high, okay? It, it is an interesting situation, to say the least. It is out of control. I'm screaming. I'm going crazy. But like I said, my parents aren't home. It's I'm four years old. And let's not forget, guys, um, huh, he's the babysitter. He's supposed to be in charge of me, the four-year-old, not intimidated by the four-year-old that he made sugar high in the first place. But regardless, douche canoe Daniel, after making the mistake of getting me sugar high, after getting the mistake of keeping me up super late, um, it's around midnight. Like I said, my parents will be home around 1, 1 30 in the morning, which is pretty, pretty late. I'm not going to lie. Douche canoe Daniel just decides to uh, do the following. He says, you know what, man? I'm hungry. Get in the car. Keep in mind, douche canoe Daniel is 15. Uh, my parents took one car. My mom's car was still at home. He goes, grabs the keys, puts four-year-old me at midnight in the car that he's not legally allowed to drive, that it's not his car, and uh, proceeds to drive with me to his friend's house at midnight. And, and it basically stole my mom's car to do this, by the way. Like, I don't know what the guy was thinking. Legitimately took my mom's car from the house without her permission with a four-year-old at, at basically midnight, one in the morning, and takes me to his girlfriend's house. They get in the car. He proceeds to tell me to get out, and they make out in the car with me standing on the sidewalk at one in the morning in the car he just stole from my garage. Who does that? What a terrible person and at the time I really didn't even think it was that big of a deal so whatever it gets to be about one in the morning he freaks out rushes me home puts me to bed and says go to sleep or I'm gonna tell your parents you spilt that chocolate milk the last time I shut up close my eyes pretend to be asleep when my parents walk in he starts talking about how I've been out since 9 p.m. all this stuff blah 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 and 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 just doesn't even tell my parents about any of this first of all I don't understand how you could possibly want to make out with your girlfriend with a four-year-old standing on the sidewalk next to you that doesn't scream romance to me like nothing about that is like oh man I'm really in the mood to just really make out with you for a quick minute you know that four year old standing next to us yeah I'm babysitting him I'm supposed to be taking care of him but I'm way more important to make out with you baby girl like what What a weirdo in the girl what, what was she thinking oh yeah perfectly normal to keep a four year old up this late and then lock him outside the car while we make out in his in his mom's car that he stole from my house regardless he lied to my parents and um I, I never really told them until I was like in eighth grade and I started realizing how bad of a babysitter he was because I guess when you're four you just don't really think about it You're just like, oh, yeah, this makes perfect sense This is just how people act which is just really stupid. I, I don't know what I was thinking to this day It was one of my dumbest experiences So when I was a wee little lad, there was this girl who lived down the street from me that from the outside world seemed pretty normal, okay? She was the pretty typical girl next door type. She was a valedictorian and like class president, or she went on to be valedictorian. She was class president, super involved in school and stuff, basically seemed like the perfect person that you would want to babysit your kid, you know? And you're sitting there and you're like, hmm, I'm trying to go get crunk with my husband. Who do I want to be in charge of my child's mind? She's probably the girl that you think of. And my parents, you know, don't have the best track record for picking babysitters, but from the outside, this was a really solid choice for who they wanted to babysit their kid. And since she lived down the street whenever I would be playing outside or anything, sometimes she would come out and like play with me and we got along really well and I really liked her. So my parents were like, perfect. This is a great babysitter for Ryan, you know? Nothing's gonna go wrong. This is gonna be a fantastic choice. Ryan's gonna have so much fun whenever we go get crunk like it's gonna be great it's gonna be a fine time everyone's gonna win here and uh, before anyone down below is like why was she outside playing with kids I was six all right this is the time before iPhones I didn't grow up with an iPad in my hand like you guys you know most teenagers were pretty bored most of the time so regardless one day I'm playing outside and, and this girl was playing with me I'm gonna name her Danielle for the story that's not her name but you know I'll call her Danielle and I say that's not her name just in case YouTube gets any fancy ideas and is like we're taking this video down that's not her real name I'm 
I'm not leaking personal information, so <laughs> anyways, uh, we're playing, and my mom says, hey, Danielle, you know, me and Ryan's dad are going out uh, this weekend. Is there any way that you could watch Ryan? We'll pay you, you know, but, like, we just need a babysitter, and Danielle goes, oh, yeah, of course, and up to this point, I thought Danielle was sick, all right? I might have been six years old, but I might have been crushing a small amount. If I had an Instagram when I was six, Danielle would have been my woman crush Wednesday at least eight Wednesdays in a row, okay? Like, she was cute, she was funny, she would play with me, uh, she knew about Power Rangers, all right? I was six years old, and I was like, I'm the Red Ranger, and she's like, I'm gonna be the Yellow Ranger, and I was like, oh my god, will you marry me, Danielle? Listen, I know I'm six, but if you wait 12 years, I will wife you up. I thought she was great. So when she said yes, I was so hyped. I was trying to push my parents out the door, okay? My mom's like, oh, we're going out Saturday. It's Wednesday, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, hey, mom, you and dad should go out right now. Like, leave, go away, never come back, actually. If you just left me to be raised with Danielle, I think that might actually be better for my childhood development, you know? Like, you guys can just leave. So little kid me is super hyped that I'm gonna have this uh, girl that I have a small crush on babysitting me because, you know, I'm a savage. I'm a put the moves on. I'm gonna be like, ayo, Danielle, haha. <laughs> I don't know if you know me, though, but I'm gonna have a big YouTube following in 12 years, you know what I'm saying? Ha <laughs> ha. So after excitedly waiting all week like a little kid, being super hyped, it's basically Christmas for me because there's gonna be a cute girl in my house. The day comes and Danielle comes over and brings over board games and we built a blanket for it. And the first time she babysits me, it is capital lit, all right? I'm having myself a fantastic time. My mom comes home and I start crying because I don't want her to be back. Like that's how lit of a time I was having. Danielle was a pretty solid babysitter, all things considered. And for the next couple weeks, everything is fantastic. Basically every weekend, Danielle comes over and uh danielle not daniel okay she she got a she got a she got a gender change halfway through I'm, I'm kidding but so danielle comes over and we have a great time basically consistently for for six months but danielle at the time was a senior in high school so it came time for her to graduate and that summer you know she wanted to be a teenager and have fun and my little heart was broken okay i miss danielle i was like huh oh, my heart longs for thee Juliet is the son, and Danielle is my babysitter, and if I do not have her, then my heart shall remain broken like an imperished ferret. Like, uh, okay, I don't know why the ferret is imperished, or if imperished is even a word at all, but like, you know, I was, I was a little heartbroken about it, but me and Danielle had a ton of fun. That's gonna be important later, because I really, really, really like Danielle. And uh, basically, anytime I could get a babysitting time with her, I would. My parents were happy because they got to go out more because they didn't have to worry about having a crazy babysitter. My, my, my parents were happier because they were going out more. I was happy because I got to spend time with Danielle. Everything's winning. But Danielle has that summer to just kind of do her thing. She babysits me once or twice, and once again, it's, it's pretty normal. Everything's going good. Everything's going fine. No big deal. Every, everything's good, right? Like, no sweat, no skin off our back at all. And then she comes home from college very quickly, about three months after leaving for college after that summer uh, she she comes home and at the time you know I didn't really understand why people come home from college halfway through a semester but generally it's because they're flunking out or you know they suddenly have an affliction for having white powder in their nose it's kind of whatever the person decides is gonna be uh, the, the, the thing that you know makes them come home and Danielle comes home and she's a little bit of a different person okay the Danielle that I once knew suddenly uh, is a little sway slurs her words a lot. I think you guys are picking up what I'm putting down, but the Danielle of old is gone, but I still really liked her. I was like, oh, sick. Danielle's back. We're going to party every weekend again. My parents are going to make her babysit me, all this good stuff. And my parents, you know, still trusted Danielle. They didn't think there was anything weird with it. And she lied and told them that she came home because, you know, school was just hard and she didn't know what she wanted to study. So she was going to take a gap year and just try to figure out what was going on, you know, just, just kind of see, let's see what, what does Danielle want in her life? And I respected that, you know, I was was only seven at this point but I was like yes Danielle you do you girl I want you to be happy Danielle listen when I'm 18 I'm still getting down on one knee it's only 11 years away now all right we're like almost there and she starts babysitting me again and the first time she's babysitting me I noticed that things are a little bit different because she doesn't want to play with me she doesn't want to like have fun or hang out um she just keeps asking me if my parents would care if someone came over and I'm kind of like uh I'm seven lady I'm not too sure I'm not a giant expert on 
on the uh, feelings of my parents when it comes to strangers. All I know is not to get into white vans. That's basically all the advice I've ever gotten. So, obviously, you know, uh, at this point, she's like, okay, well, I'm going to invite someone over, but don't tell your mom and dad. Don't tell your mom and dad. Don't tell your mom and dad. And I'm like, all right, okay, I'm not going to tell my mom and dad. I, I got you, Danielle. We have a special bond since we're eventually going to get married. I ain't going to snitch on my wife, all right, guys? You know, I'm not 6'9". I'm not 6'9". I'm not going to be the type of guy that snitches for no reason. So she invites someone over, and for the next 20 minutes, she's just frantically looking out the window and basically ignoring me, which made me feel pretty sad because Danielle used to be a great babysitter, and she's just ignoring the kid, which is kind of the weird point of babysitting. Like, I don't know if you know this, Danielle. I don't know uh, what, what was going through your head after you left college. Maybe you just left because you were stupid. You're supposed to watch the kid. But I'm telling you, I literally could have turned on the oven, started tap dancing on top of it, caught my shoe on fire, throwing my shoe onto the carpet. The carpet could have burst into flames, and Danielle would have been like, okay, my boyfriend's not here yet. Come on, chillax. Well, it ended up being her boyfriend, but <laughs> we're getting there. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So after about 15 minutes of her looking out the window like a crack addict expecting Jesus to come through, uh, this, this guy pulls up on a motorcycle, and he gets out, and he walks in, and uh, he is covered in tattoos. I'm talking face tats. I'm talking normal tats. And this isn't now with sound. SoundCloud rappers, all right. These aren't little pump face tattoos. These are the type of face tattoos where when the guy's walking towards you in the grocery store, you're 97% sure you're about to get mugged. Like th those types of face tattoos. You know, they're, they're tattoos that aren't even like looking good. You know, it's like an upside down X that's spelt wrong. I don't know how you spell one letter wrong, but I'm pretty sure on his face there was a spelt wrong letter. Like it was an A. And if you went, what letter is that? He go, it was supposed to be a C, but we were all crunk. Like you know, it, it's just uh, it, he he had some interesting tattoos was very clearly a very uh, classy guy, you know, so we're chilling there having ourselves a conversation, and by us having ourselves a conversation, uh, they were just frantically making out on the couch, while my, like, seven-year-old self is sitting there just kind of like, do-to-do, do-to-do, this is fine, everything's fine, you know, you know the meme of the dog where he's sitting in the kitchen and literally everything's on fire, and he's like, ah, it's fine, everything is fine, that's basically the situation at hand here, so... They make out on the couch for a little bit, and then they go, okay, I'm gonna leave. And I'm kind of like, hey, Danielle, you know, I've been super chill so far. I let your boyfriend come over. I let you guys make out while I was sitting here trying to play Power Rangers. You know, I've been super chill. I don't necessarily think that, you know, <laughs> You leaving me home alone is the best idea. My parents are kind of paying you to sit here and make sure I don't burn anything down. And there's not really a way for you to make sure that I'm not burning anything down if you're not here. Like, you know, if, if you're not in the house, you can't make sure the house still exists. So anyways, she leaves with this dude, leaves like seven-year-old me just straight up chilling on the couch all alone. She didn't even leave any lights on, all right? Thank goodness I knew how to turn light switches on. I know most seven-year-olds don't even know how to turn on the lights. Or uh, maybe that's just my brother, all right? We, we locked him under the stairs for a little bit. He's got this weird thing. He's got a lightning bolt scar on his head. I'm not really quite sure what's going on, but dang, he's weird. So regardless, she just like left me home alone and ditched. But at this point, I still really like Danielle. So she comes home about four hours later, uh, definitely in a different state of mind, all right? I I'm going to leave that up to the older kids who can understand what I'm saying, can understand what was going on. But she comes home in definitely a different state of mind. So regardless, uh, I'm just kind of sitting there not really knowing what to do because she's clearly out of it She just comes and like crashes on the couch and my mom and dad come home probably about an hour after that during which I'm still trying to make sure she's breathing Okay, like I'm looking at her and it's one of those things where she kind of looks like passed out So I'm putting mirrors under her nose to make sure that she's still breathing You know general stuff that seven-year-olds have to do with their babysitters hashtag bonding forever LMAO So regardless my parents come home and uh, they're like, oh, is she okay? And I'm like, yeah, she was really sick earlier. She threw up and they're like oh my goodness well let's just let her sleep on the couch and let's go to bed so we go to bed and I'm seven and I'm covering for her and the next day uh, my parents are like hey can we gotta run to the grocery store a little fast can you sit with Ryan for like 20 minutes and she's like yeah and she starts asking me the seven year old what happened last night and if you have to ask the seven year old you're supposed to be babysitting what happened last night the answer is probably nothing good so I kind of fill her in and I'm like so uh, I lied for you and she's like oh you covered for me and I'm like yeah and she's like oh that's so sweet. You're such a good kid. And I'm like, yes, I know I'm a good kid, which is why you should babysit me and stop hanging out with dudes with one letter spelled wrong on their face. To this day, I still don't know how you could spell a letter wrong, but his face tattoos were that bad, all right? I I'm pretty sure at one point he said, yeah, that's a lion. And it looked like the Napoleon drawing dynamite of a liger. Like, it, it was a rough time. So, 
regardless uh, I covered for her and she went back to her house and my parents still paid her were never the wiser which in retrospect I don't know why I covered for her like she was obviously out of it but when you're young and in love sometimes you got to do what you got to do and I still planned on marrying this hoe regardless guys uh, it, it wasn't the end there the next time she came to babysit me basically the same thing happened and uh, obviously didn't make me feel too good and it was even harder because like I said I really liked Danielle and we had a bunch of fun together so watching this person that you've known for a while kind of change and become something that uh, isn't too great definitely isn't a fun thing to witness but sometimes life is out of your control but this time when she comes home instead of you know just passing out on the couch she brings face tattoo boy back with her okay and at this point I've already lied to my parents once and I felt bad about lying to them the first time so I warn her when he comes in I'm like I can't lie to my mom and dad again which you know pretty mature words for a seven-year-old I feel like that should sober you up a little bit this seven-year-old is like ah, I can't keep covering for you I think I'd be like wow I, mi I might be going down the wrong path here this might not be the greatest avenue for my life but some people uh you know <laughs> aren't the brightest which obviously this chick wasn't which is weird because she was used to be valedictorian but anyways okay so she comes back and she brings the guy back and I'm like look my parents are gonna be mad if this guy's here you know like you can't do that and she's like yeah whatever and just kind of blows me off and is like it's not gonna be that big of a deal he'll leave before your parents come home and keep in mind they came back to the house at probably midnight my parents got home around 1 1 30 whenever they would go out so my parents come home at 1 1 30 in the morning and sure enough face tattoo boy is still sitting there on their couch and they're kind of like oh who are you whatever like what's going on da 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 and and Danielle puts me on the spot and says oh we were at the park and this guy was practicing kung fu and Ryan wanted to learn some and I'm so sorry I didn't realize how weird it would be to bring him back to the house you know da 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 blah 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 like you know it makes up this bullcrap story about karate which I don't know why my parents believe like my parents were like huh you went to the park after we left when it was already dark met a stranger practicing kung fu my son said hey I want to learn kung fu and then you brought him back to the house and then after teaching you kung fu he decided to stay and hang out until 1 30 in the morning because he just really wanted to make sure the kung fu genes got into the kid after the lesson yeah I, I don't think so I don't know why my parents bought that they definitely uh definitely 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 don't see red flags like I think my parents might be colorblind and whenever there's a red flag about somebody they're like oh honey look at that green flag isn't that so pretty and then she puts me on the spot like dog you just lied to my parents face and then looked at me and said what up six nine you snitching or not so for some reason I still lied for her I still went yeah yeah that's what happened and my parents definitely like didn't believe it all the way but we're definitely like I mean okay if you say like whatever Danielle has a big track record you know she's babysat him for years of course she's telling the truth there's no way that she's she's lying and I was like yeah I covered for her I don't know why I covered for her but I felt bad So uh, my little brother who I live with is seven years younger than me, which is a pretty big age difference, you know, like uh, seven years is a pretty long time. All right, that that's like a presidency, um, five episodes of The Bachelor, 37 seasons of Parks and Rec, and one depressed falling apart marriage, all right? Like seven years is quite a long time. And because we're so far apart and don't really look a ton alike, a lot of people don't think that we're brothers, you know? Like uh, they, they just don't think that. You know, me and, uh, me and my brother really don't look alike at all. He's kind of this short blonde kid and I'm tall with brown hair uh we're far enough apart where he hasn't really gone through like the puberty changes or anything so our faces don't look super similar yet I mean I'm sure they will I'm sure me and my brother will eventually look alike but you guys get what I'm saying it wasn't exactly like me and him looked super alike uh what when he was 11 and I was 18 but uh regardless me and him are, are pretty damn close he's, he's one of my best friends for sure and I really love the kid and uh when I went off to college I I really missed him you know he was the kid that I would hang out with the most my, uh, my, my other friends, most of them are online, and me and my little brother just got along really well. We're into the same stuff. We're both nerdy. We both like video games. We both really like YouTube. So, obviously, being away from your brother who you've hung out with basically every day since the day he was born, you know, me and him would, uh, be newborns hitting that Halo grind sesh, all right? He might have been two months old, but I was giving him a monster so he could pull the all-nighter and play Halo with me. No, but on a serious note, guys, I, I really did miss my brother. And, uh, one weekend, my parents were gonna be out of town. They were like, Ryan, no one's gonna be home, you know? Um, so if you want to come home and spend time with your brother, he'll have literally nothing to do. And I was like, oh, okay, sick. 
uh, is he gonna have, like, a babysitter? They said, yeah, we got him a babysitter for the weekend, but, uh, I don't know, she seems like she's kind of a, a little bit of an airhead, so it would also make me more comfortable if you came home and just made sure everything was okay. Which, uh, mom and dad, I don't really know what you're thinking, honestly, that is the least 500 IQ big brain play of all time. Like, I'm not saying my parents are stupid, but, uh, that's pretty stupid to hire a babysitter where you're like, yeah, I'm kind of nervous, but will you watch my 11-year-old son for the weekend? Solid play, like, solid big brain 500 IQ right there. Th that's what I was raised by, which is why I get myself into all these crazy situations in the first place. But regardless, I decided that I'm gonna surprise my brother and, um, drive down and, you know, just, like, do my best to surprise him a little bit, and we're just gonna have a good time hanging out this weekend. No big deal, right? No big deal at all. At least it shouldn't have been a big deal. So, uh, my little brother plays soccer, and when I got into town, because it was, like, a three-hour drive back in, I knew he was gonna be at soccer practice. So, I decided to pull up and just surprise him at soccer practice, and, uh, I actually would, like, help kind of assistant coach the teams a little bit. Like, not a ton, but everybody on the team, all the parents and all the kids knew who I was. So I wasn't really too stressed about it. So I pull up to where they practice soccer, and I get out of the car, and it looks like they're just wrapping up. And obviously, I, I see my little brother, and I kind of, like position myself so he'll see me and I can just say hi and like it won't be crazy obvious you know I'm not trying to cause a giant scene I'm just trying to surprise my brother so after practice he sees me and he runs over to me and we're just talking and he's like dude I missed you and like this is a normal conversation I gave him a hug and, it, and everybody else like all the other parents on the team are like oh Ryan's back like yeah like so I'm talking to people about how's college uh, me and my brother are you know bonding a little bit like man I missed you like it was just a good experience okay it was going really 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 great I say was was guys was going great so uh, my brother's big babysitter walks up to me and I can only describe her as and I'm, I'm not trying to be mean here guys I'm really really not I'm not trying to be mean she kind of looked like ugly Betty like I don't know if you guys know who that is but that is kind of who she looked like and she walks up to me and she goes excuse me who are you and I'm like oh hi I'm Ryan I'm his brother and she goes you are not his brother his parents did not tell me that he has a brother and I'm like well I'm his brother I I'm sorry my parents didn't mention the fact that he has an older brother I don't know what you want me to say I'm his brother, like, uh, I, oh, okay, I guess my parents didn't tell you I'm his brother, I apologize for being related to somebody, like, I don't really know what you want me to do, sorry. And she says, what are you doing talking to this kid, do you know how old he is, like, how dare you, it's so disrespectful. Lady, I'm his brother, okay, like, I don't really know what you want me to do, I don't know who you think you are, I'm literally his brother, like, I, I, I have the same last name on my birth certificate, we have the same parents, I don't know what you would like me to say in this situation other than the fact that I am his brother, so I'm trying to calm her down, because it does look weird, alright, I'm not gonna lie, I might have looked slightly like a creeper, maybe she's just being defensive, because I kinda looked like I pulled up on the hello kid, do you wanna get my van flow? Listen, sometimes you gotta look on everything you do with retrospect, and I may or may not have slightly looked like I enjoy kidnapping kids on the weekend, alright, I'm not gonna cap, I, I walked up to this kid after soccer practice, hugged him and started talking to him out of nowhere without saying hi to anybody else. Yeah, that honestly does look a little bit creepy. I'm not gonna lie. On a scale of one to creeper, I'm looking like a total Ted Bundy right now, and uh, that, that's not my favorite. So I'm trying to stay chill. I'm like, all right, maybe she's just, you know, obviously the situation looks a little bit bizarre. It doesn't exactly look like something that you would see every day. So I'll just give her the benefit of the doubt, and I'm like, hey, I'm her brother. Like, you can go ask the other parents over there. Like, I promise. She's, I don't care what the other parents think. I just don't want you to talk to my kid. And I'm like, um, so you, you don't care what the other parents say? You're just gonna say that I'm a kidnapper or whatever? Somebody's like, nah, you're not a kidnapper. You're just gonna say no? Like, what? What? I don't understand people who just deny evidence. Like, they'll be like, oh, yeah? Well, Jupiter's not even a planet. And you're like, well, here's proof Jupiter's a planet. And they're like, no. Just no. Like, I don't believe you. Like, what, what do you mean? What do you mean you're not gonna accept other people's words that this is actually my brother? How else am I supposed to prove that this is my brother? I, I don't know what you want me to do, lady. And my brother is big confused during all this. He's like, no, it's my brother. And she's like, no, you're just confused. Like, what? What? You, this is an 11 year old kid, not a two year old looking at a green crayon going blue. Like, I, I'm his brother. What do you mean you're just confused? I don't really know what you're on about. So, whatever. She's like, well, we're leaving. And I'm like, all right, well, then I'll see you at the house. And she's like, you will not see me at the house. You're right, lady. I won't. I don't know where you live. I don't have a house key. It's not like I've lived there for 18 years. What What do you mean, you psycho woman? So obviously, I get in the car and I drive home, and I'm kind of just laughing at this because I'm like, well, when I walk in with the key to the house, she's going to feel like a big idiot, right? Like, how are you going to deny that I'm his brother when there's pictures of me on the wall and I'm, uh, you know, entering the house with a key, right? Like, I don't know. I feel like it's pretty hard to deny that I'm actually related to the person when I'm walking into the house and the dogs don't bark and everything's chilling. So, uh, anyways, I, I basically pull up on the block and I bleed it, you know, slide if I don't want something, I don't eat it.
That, that was a weird blue face parody thing. I'm not really sure what I was doing there, but you guys get the idea. I get back to my house, and I walk inside. I unlock the door. I'm petting my dog. My brother's like, hey, Ryan, and uh, here comes babysitter lady, all right? Like, I really don't know where my parents found this lady. They might have actually been standing outside of a mental hospital just picking up random people and being like, hey, want to watch my son for the weekend? That's the only explanation for anything involving this. Like, I really don't understand how a person could be, A, this stupid, B, this delusional, or C, all of the above. Like, I, I'm sorry. I really don't understand how you can just deny that people are related when there's proof that they're related. But, hey, maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm the only logical one here on the internet. So, I, I, like I said, I'm in the house, and she sees me, and she goes, What are you doing in here? How did you get in? And I'm like, I have a key. I told you I'm his brother. Like, look, there's me on the wall. And I point to a picture of me that was taken maybe, maybe five months earlier. It was my senior pictures. So... Obviously, it's a pretty recent picture of me. It's not like it's like a picture of me when I was seven I could look different, you know, it's literally me and she goes that's not you what what do you mean that that's literally a picture of me? I don't know what like, what's like, oh, okay I I guess it's not me But if it's not me then who is it because that looks exactly like me so at this point I'm like, okay look There's more pictures of me around the house. I can tell you the layout of the house. I can tell you how the rooms are decorated I'm telling you I'm his brother, I live here. And she's like, well then I guess we'll just call his mother and find out. Is that really what you want, huh? I'm gonna tell you, you have five seconds to get out of this house before I call the police and then his mother. And I say, all right, I'll call. I'll call his mother. So uh, I open up my phone and call my contact name, mom, because um, she's my mom, bro. Like, I don't know what you mean. And she's like, that's not him. That's not the number. Like, I need to double check. Let me call. And I'm like, all right, fine, fine. You can call. So I see her, you know, chicken fingering my mom's number into her phone. And she's like, has this look on her face like she caught me. Like, oh, uh, wow, haha. And if I am a child kidnapper, how did I get a key to the house, bro? Do you really think I'm a child kidnapper and I know there's another adult home and then um, I'm going to show up anyways? Not to mention, if I am a child kidnapper, you are now having a conversation with a child kidnapper in the living room of a house with a child home just to prove your point and call his mother? Like, are you, uh, what? This is not a good babysitting move. This is a 0 out of 10 technique. I give this technique a 0 out of 10 Chris Hansen's. So she calls my mom and she answers. She's like, hello, Michelle. Um, I was just letting you know that there is a man here who claims to be Reese's brother, but I didn't understand that he had a brother. Like, can you please clear this up for me? And my mom just gets really quiet and starts, like, laughing. And she's like, uh, this is kind of funny. And she's like, it's not a joke. There is a man in the house. And my mom's like, well, yeah, it's Reese's brother. And the lady, like... I don't understand if, the, if these words broke her mind or, like, I, I don't think she thought logically. She's like, well, can he leave? And my mom's like, no. Why would I kick my son out? What? what? And so at this point, I'm like, bro, what is going on? And she's like, I'm not comfortable babysitting with a man around. And I'm like, all right, yes, because obviously we have such great chemistry, you know? I'm obviously going to try to hit on you and make you uncomfortable the entire weekend after you called me a kidnapper and tried to kick me out of my own home. That's a great first impression, you know? We might fall in love and have a wedding this weekend. No, it's not going to happen. So I kind of tell my mom, you know, mom, I can watch Reese. Like, I don't mind, you know? Like, I'll be here all weekend. You guys enjoy your break. Please get this crazy lady out of my house. And my mom's like, well, what do you think? And the girl's like, well, it's me or him. Yeah, my mom's, my mom's going to pick you over her son. Big brain IQ. Obviously the world's most intelligent babysitter to ever exist. Obviously the brightest mind of our generation. And my mom's like, all right, well, then I guess you can go home and my son will stay. And she's like, uh, really? After our commitment? And my mom's like, it's my son. You, you want me to kick my son out of his house because you don't know him. I, yes, you can leave. And she left in a huff and a puff and me and my brother ate nothing but Hot Pockets and Doritos the rest of the weekend and had a great time playing Xbox. So moral of the story is, if a babysitter thinks you're a kidnapper, buy Doritos. I don't really think those are related. I don't think that's the lesson you're supposed to learn, but uh, that's what I learned from it, so... So when I went off to college, my younger brother was still about 12, which meant that when my parents went out, he needed a babysitter, you know? And usually it was up to me or like a babysitter that we would both get. But when I was older, you know, 16, 17, 15, 14, I, I was in charge of uh, watching my brother when he'd go out. But when I went to college, you know, I was no longer around. So my parents decided to get a babysitter. And uh, I was kind of known as a little bit of a troublemaker in our neighborhood, okay? I'm not going to lie. I uh, definitely like to get up to some no good. So when my mom found a kid 
the neighborhood who was a little bit older. She called me and asked, like, yo, is this girl someone we should be worried about, or is she pretty cool? And, uh, to be honest, I had always known this girl as a little bit lame, I'm not gonna lie. She was not somebody that I ever went out of my way to hang out with. She was not somebody that was ever getting involved with any of the cool kids. So I tell my mom, look, I've never heard anything bad about her. I've never heard her go crazy at a party or anything. You should be good, because she's low-key kind of a nerd. And my mom is like, awesome, that's exactly who I want wanting my kids, which is a nerd. Which, I mean, when you're the kid, you don't want a nerd babysitting you, but, like, low-key, if I was a parent, I would want a nerd watching my kid, too. I don't want my kid going to do cool stuff when they're supposed to be, like, safe and in bed, you know? There's, like, people sneaking them out to high school parties. Yeah, I, I don't know about all that. No, instead, I want my kid's babysitter to be lame. I want them to play Monopoly by all the rules, okay? I want them to make my kid's life so boring that they fall asleep at 6 p.m. because they'd rather be asleep than be with their babysitter only because then I know at least they're being safe I don't have to worry about anything else I've had my fair share of bad experiences so whatever this girl starts babysitting my brother and watches him like four weekends in a row and there's no problems whatsoever the first four weeks are chill my brother complains about her being boring but like I said you know my parents are low-key kind of hyped that it's a boring babysitter because we kind of went through a revolving door for a bit, but that's because me and my brother are just, you know, low-key some bad kids. But th that's the reality. Sometimes babysitters low-key just need to be boring. So my brother would complain. My mom's like, ah, oh, this is great. And then she starts to notice small stuff around the house going missing. You know, stuff in drawers not being in the same place. But she just thinks maybe, like, my dad or me or my brother are moving it, even though I wasn't home, you know? They were just really delusional. So she decides to not think anything of it. Sure, certain drawers are getting moved around, and, like, some stuff is in different places. But nothing's going missing. It's just shifting locations. So it's no big deal, you know? My parents are just like, huh, that's bizarre. And then the stuff that starts to get moved starts to become more valuable. My mom's, like, jewelry gets shifted, but nothing goes missing. And my mom just thinks maybe she's forgetting in the morning when she gets up because my mom goes to work super early. Maybe she's, like, putting on a piece of jewelry, not liking it, putting it back, and then not remembering it later in the day because she leaves for work at, you know, 5.30 in the morning. So she's not thinking anything of it. And she doesn't even tell my dad that stuff's moving because she thinks she's going to sound like a crazy person. So she just... Keeps doing her thing, going to work, putting on her jewelry, thinking she's a crazy person. And then one day, my dad, who, bless his heart, has a prescription for Adderall, you know, goes to my mom and is like, Hey, I think someone is taking our Adderall, or are you taking it? Because I'm out of pills, and it was supposed to last 90 days, and it's only lasted like 45. And my mom's like, well... No, you know, I, I'm not out here cranking Adderall. Oh my god, my mom on Adderall would be a nightmare. She's already on edge enough, dude. I don't know what it is with parents, but I feel like moms are just always intense. Like, moms do not have a chill button. Uh, at least mine doesn't. I don't know about your guys', but my mom will always find something to complain about or, like, something to get all uppity about. I don't care what it is. It could be the most chill, peaceful day ever. My mom will find a reason to have something to get, like, uptight about. So, my mom on something that gives you more focus, yeah, that's not something I'm trying to enjoy. So, thankfully, it wasn't my mom. But then my mom tells my dad, wow, that's weird, you know, I've noticed that some of my jewelry is getting moved. Nothing's going missing, you know, but it's, like, getting shifted and moved. And my dad's like, huh, that's weird. Well, who's been in our house? So, they decide, since I've kind of said that this girl is a nerd, that it's gotta be my brother taking all their stuff and, like, selling it or using it to get something from his friends. Like, they don't know why he's doing it, but my poor brother, dude, 12-year-old him, gets sat down by my parents as soon as he gets home from soccer practice. And both of them start tearing into him being like, we know what you've been doing. We know that you've been going behind our back and taking stuff and moving stuff. And it's very wrong to snoop on your parents and taking your dad's medications is dangerous. Like, do you have any idea what it's like to take things that aren't prescribed to you by a doctor? And my brother is just staring at them like, what are you talking about, you know? And normally when little kids get caught doing something, unless they're pretty talented at getting away with it, it's really obvious if a kid has done something. And my brother has this look on his face like, I don't know what you guys are talking about or why you're talking about it to me, but okay. So my mom and dad kind of quickly realize that my brother doesn't even know what's up because they give him like the bottle of my dad's pills and he can't even open it. Like my brother literally can't even open the bottle. So there's no way he's sneaking in there and popping some Addies for his sixth grade math test. So whatever, my mom and dad figure it might be the babysitter, but they don't want to cause any problems because like I said, I said she's a good kid and for whatever reason, my parents trust me even though they know that I'm not up to good. But like I wasn't even capping on him, dude. She, I thought she was a good kid, but I guess, you know... 
A crippling Adderall addiction will do that to you. It it'll ruin things for you. So, obviously, my mom and dad decide that they're going to have to catch her in the act. And she hasn't really, like, taken anything outside of my dad's stuff. But even then, that's pretty hard to prove. So... They decide they got to catch her in the act. So that Friday, my mom leaves a little camera in her closet and doesn't say anything. And sure enough, she comes home. And this time, a pair of my mom's earrings has gone missing. And so they watch it back. And the girl comes in and, like, with extreme confidence, just plucks it, takes something out of my mom's jewelry box, and then walks out of the room. So they decide they're going to confront her about it. So the next time she comes over for a week, my parents are planning how to confront them. And so they confront her, and she immediately just bursts into tears and is like, I'm so sorry, I know it's wrong to snoop and steal, but, you know, obviously, like, I didn't realize that you guys were watching. I feel like a horrible person. It feels so good to have this off my chest. And my parents, bless their soul, being the kind people that they are, decide to forgive this girl. They're like, oh, it's okay. Obviously, now that you've confessed that you did something wrong, you won't do it again. So my parents, for whatever reason, decide to give her another chance. And I'm going to break this down for you. If you ever catch somebody that you're supposed to be trusting to watch your kids stealing from you, you shouldn't continue to trust them with their kid. But yeah, hey, we all make mistakes, even parents out there. Mom, dad, if you're watching this, uh, you guys just do dumb stuff sometimes, all right? I love you to death. You guys did a pretty good job. I turned out great. But th this one is not one of your brightest moments. If I was making a montage of the best of my parents, this would definitely not be on the top of the list. So my parents have this little, like, rainy day money fund where they keep all their change, you know, and uh, they've saved enough change over the years where, like, it'll pay for a vacation once a year. I don't really know where my parents get so much change, dude. I don't know if my dad is, like, low-key having an affair with a bus driver and all the quarters that he gets paid on the bus my dad just takes home. I don't know what my dad's into, but somebody in my family is getting way too many coins. This is not normal. Unless someone's making it hail on my mother, I, I'm not quite sure where all these coins are coming from. And sure enough, the next time she babysits, my mom and dad check the house, and uh, guess what is missing? That is right, the entire collection of coins that probably has a lot of value. So my mom and dad go over to her house, sit down her parents, and are like, did you take all of our coins? And she's like, no, no, I didn't. And the parents are like, okay, come on, um... This family probably isn't going to come over here and start arguing with you unless they know that you took the coins. And I guess while, uh, while she's, like, trying to lie and say she didn't take it, something crumples in her jacket pocket. And they pull out a coin star receipt. This chick had stolen my parents' coin collection, gone to the nearest, like, Walgreens, and traded it in for cash. And, uh... That is when my parents decided, you know, my brother was probably old enough to stay home alone. He didn't really need a babysitter anymore after that because my brother the entire time was like, I never liked her. I told you guys all along. And when the girl that your son says has kind of been whack as a babysitter ends up uh, to have been stealing stuff from your family the whole time, it doesn't exactly make you look like you can pick good people to take care of them anyways. So low-key, my parents took an L. This uh, girl was an Adderall-addicted thief that was just just going through my parents stuff and then when she got caught stealing my parents for whatever reason invited them back into our house to watch my little brother like i said definitely not a parental highlight but a pretty good story nonetheless and it's the only reason that my brother is still allowed to stay home home alone my mom is a little bit overprotective to say the least but uh hey i guess when you stop a criminal you get some perks <laughs> But basically, I had this babysitter that was actually a really solid babysitter, super fun to be around, had a really good time, uh, and then she went to college and became a crackhead and started dating a guy with a face tattoo with a letter that was spelt wrong. Don't ask me how a letter was spelt wrong, but you know, it's just crackhead things, you know? Like, you know those parodies of just girly things that you used to see on Facebook where it was like, when he gives you his sweatshirt, it was like, when he just does crack? Like, that's basically what this relationship boiled down to. But uh, regardless of the cookie monster of crack, it was basically a situation that was really sad, but you know, I was a only seven or eight at the time and I just kept having to lie to my mom to cover for Danielle's stupidity like this this girl Danielle would get into crappy situations with her face tattooed boyfriend and then would like make me lie to my parents about what was going on and for some reason my parents were just like man you know makes sense kid with a face tattoo is teaching my son karate in the living room uh, that was literally something that she made me lie about she said that her boyfriend with the face tattoo met us at the park and I really wanted to learn karate from him so he came back to the house and I had to lie to my parents about it which is not good don't lie to your parents kids but you know I 
was really young at the time, and I just really wasn't what like I, I don't know why I didn't realize how wrong it was, but I was just kind of like, nah, Danielle's the homie, and we ain't snitching. I am not six nine. I am not going like you know, as Lil Sky says, I ain't folding under pressure. You know, I'm not gonna do it. It's just not gonna happen. So regardless, this uh, part two of the Psycho Babysitter series is, is going to get <laughs> dramatically increased in craziness, okay? I guess you know what they say, uh, the longer you're dropped out of college and dating a guy with a face tattoo, the crazier things get. So Danielle uh, had a car and crashed it. She got rear-ended really, really badly after she came home from school and the car got totaled. So basically, she had no car, which was kind of a hindrance because if she was babysitting me and wanted to go do something or wanted to take me somewhere to do something fun we really had no way to get around and uh obviously i don't know the circumstances of how she was rear-ended this is like 11 years ago at this point and i don't exactly remember everything that went down on the process of her uh getting a new car but she didn't have a new car for a while and she was still babysitting me basically every weekend when my parents would go out and uh, since she didn't have a car it made it a lot easier for us to actually have fun again and for a little bit danielle seemed more normal when she was around me she wasn't thinking about face tattoo man all right she wasn't going crazy Crazy. She wasn't asking me to lie for my parents and for a little bit everything returned back to normal and I thought everything was Gucci Okay, I was sitting there like dang, you know, I basically have the power to save anyone uh, Anytime anyone has any trouble you just got to come babysit me for a little bit Make me lie to my parents and then you'll total your car and everything will go back to normal like that's just the way life is gonna go uh, Call me dr. Phil because I'm out here saving these hoes But obviously things are not that simple and after a couple weeks of us not having a car Danielle started telling my parents that uh, she could have way more fun and make babysitting way more interesting if she just had a car and when my parents were going out and doing things there was a car at home either way because obviously my parents weren't driving separately like it wasn't like my parents were pulling up to the club in two different cars because that way they just didn't want anybody to know they came together like my mom pulls up to the nightclub in my dad's car and it's like oh yeah me I don't have a husband you know oh this car no 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 it's it's not my husband's at all like I hope that wasn't happening and if it was mom dad you have some explaining to do okay so there was a car at home so when Danielle was telling this to my mom she goes oh Oh, yeah, you're more than welcome to take one of our cars whenever, you know, we're out. If you're babysitting Ryan and you guys want to go to the park or something, like, you're more than welcome to take our car. It's no skin off our back. Like, don't even worry about it, which, you know, uh, seems like a pretty normal thing to do. It seems pretty normal that if the babysitter was just walking down the street and wanted to take your kids somewhere, that she was able to borrow your car. But let's not forget that Danielle was what we call a crackhead. And something about crackhead energy that you need to understand is it hinders the ability of your brain to make good decisions, all right? Crackhead energy is also known as living your best life because you don't do things that are better long term you're just like huh this seems fun we're gonna do it we're gonna send it we're not gonna think about the consequences of our actions we're just gonna go ham and just ruin everything like we're gonna in one fell swoop just ruin everything good about our life which hey if that's your plan and that's your strategy going into things uh you know i don't approve but you know live your best life do what you gotta do i'm not in charge of you if that's what you feel like doing then you probably need some therapy or something but hey if that's your choice that's your choice i'm not gonna tell you how to live your life except you shouldn't do crack so the first time this happens i hop in the whip with danielle all right chief keith is blasting i am ready to roll through zone six like the absolute savage that i am and uh last time i had driven with danielle it was before she graduated high school and she was a really good driver you know she was patient she was aware of her surroundings she didn't tailgate anybody she was you know a pretty good driver all things considered to this day she's one of the better people that i've ever ridden in a car with and if i remember how good of a driver you are after like a 11 years that means you were pretty good and uh you know this was a different danielle this was danielle after college and i'm telling you i think she forgot how to drive like it was almost like a computer program where you do nothing but play minecraft and then you uninstall minecraft and the computer's like huh i do not know my purpose why do i exist and starts getting depressed and having an existential crisis like i don't understand how somebody can go from being so good at something to so bad but even as a child a little kid i am sitting there gripping you know the oh crap handle on the side of the car like haha everything's fine everything's fine everything's fine everything's fine everything's fine like I was a little scared of the situation and if a seven-year-old is terrified of your driving skills you're probably just a really bad driver because they shouldn't notice those types of things at one point she has her head out of the window like a dog like okay I'm chilling with Airbud on our way to an NBA game with her head out of the window just screaming at cars to move out of her way and the weirdest part is cars are moving out of her way I guess to be fair if I was driving down the street and I saw uh, someone leaning out of their window screaming move and driving incredibly quickly down the road I'd probably just move for my own safety too so maybe it was more of a self-preservation move than it was actually
actually giving in to her demands. But, like, she was swerving in and out of traffic, speeding through school zones. Like, I'm pretty sure she was going, you know, 50 miles an hour in a 25 zone. She was an absolutely terrible driver. So, we get to this park that we were going to, right? And we get out of the car, and I'm pretty sure I'm kissing the ground, you know? Like, you know in cartoons when people get off a rocky boat ride, and they just start kissing the ground? Like, I'm never leaving you again. That's what I was like, all right? I'm lucky to be alive. At this point, I should get my own Discovery TV show. On Discovery TV, they have this show called I Shouldn't Be Alive, where people talk about, you know, getting lost or attacked by a mountain lion in the middle of the woods with no one there to help them. Like, I think I deserve my own series of that, because I do not know how I survived this situation to this day, okay? I, I, I am out here really being a savage. And we get to the park, and I go about my business just playing, and she's just sitting on a bench on her phone, you know, just kind of looking up every now and then. Uh, back then, phones were not super swagged iPhones like we have now, but instead, she had a green razor. I still remember what it looked like. And suddenly, she answers the phone and starts walking away. And I'm like, whatever, she's on a phone call, no big deal. So I just keep playing on the park. I don't, I don't really think it's any big deal. So she starts walking around the park on her phone, and I just keep doing my thing, all right? I'm probably playing Power Rangers or something, pretending to be the president and, like, you know, making decisions to impact the rest of the world. Whatever little kid me was doing. And I see her start to walk around the park, uh, on her phone, and after a little bit of noticing where she's going, I'm like, eh, whatever, she's just on the phone, she'll come back whenever, um, it it's no big deal, no skin off my back, no big deal at all, we're gonna be fine, no sweat. And, uh, after about 20 minutes, I look over, and I realize that, uh, my mom's car is gone, okay? Uh, an eight-year-old me doesn't really know what to do, I'm kinda like, ah, maybe she moved the car. So I walk over to the parking lot from the park, and I'm looking around, and sure enough, the car isn't there. I don't know if she forgot I existed or, like, had to go see her boyfriend or what, but Danielle is gone. The car is gone. There's no car. Which, how do you forget the kids you're babysitting, okay? Like, it's one thing if you purposely leave the kid, but you'll, you'll figure out in a little bit. Apparently, she just forgot. I don't buy that. In retrospect, obviously, she just left me. But how do you just leave an eight-year-old sitting there with nothing to do? Like, I was eight years old. You know how easy I would have been to kidnap, all right? Somebody could have just walked up and been like, Hey, kid, do you want some candy? Next thing I know, I'm in Uganda making Nike shoes. Like, that, that was super not cool of you, Danielle. So she leaves, and I just go back to the park and keep playing because I'm like, I don't know what to do. What am I? I guess I'm left here. Like, I don't, there's nothing I can really do about it. I don't know. Eight-year-old me was surprisingly calm. Like, I feel like most eight-year-olds would have freaked out, but eight-year-old me was like, man, better go back to playing at the park so I go back to playing at the park and after about two hours the kids I was playing with left and uh, now I'm just alone at the park and this is when I'm starting to be like okay this is kind of annoying not to mention it's starting to get dark like it's around 8 p.m. at this point in the summer uh, where I live and it starts to get dark around 8, 8.30. So it's getting dark. I'm at the park alone. All of my friends left. And I'm just chilling there because my babysitter decided to leave me in the middle of nowhere in a park with no way to contact her. This is the time before cell phones. So after sitting alone in this dark park for about 10 minutes, I see a car pull up. And sure enough, face tattoo guy walks over to the park and says, All right, bro, let's go. And I'm like... What? What? Where did you come from? And he goes, yeah, uh, Danielle's back at your house, man. We went there to hang out. She said she got bored at the park, so, uh, she sent me to come get you, though. And I'm like, oh, uh, okay. Uh, eight-year-old me didn't really know what to do, but in retrospect, you got bored of watching an eight-year-old that you're being paid to watch at the park, so you left them there to go hang out at his house with your boyfriend in his mom's car, right? And just didn't didn't decide to come back like you were just like no what, what what do you mean so i look at the guy and i'm like i don't really know if i want to go with you and he's like well bro you either come with me or like you're staying because she's not coming back man like danielle sent me to get you bro like she's not gonna come get you and i'm like uh yeah oh, oh okay so i get in the car with face tattoo man and shockingly he is somehow a better driver than danielle okay danielle was so bad that even this guy who was also terrible uh it, it, it's somehow better right like i somehow am safer in this car with this dude than i ever was with <laughs> with danielle which is which is bizarre but we get back to my house right and we're going through the garage because the garage was open and i see this huge scrape down the side of my mom's car and uh you know 
when growing up, my, my parents did okay. Like, we were never struggling for anything, but my parents definitely were not insanely wealthy. Like, my parents, you know, a, a giant scratch in the side of the car to fix was going to be a big deal in my family, all right? Like, I never struggled for anything. I wasn't exactly like, oh, you know, I, I, I don't have food, but we were also never in a position to just be going out fixing cars every month because a babysitter, like, scraped the side out of them, you know? So I see this huge scrape down the side of my mom's car, and I'm like, what happened? Like, that's my thought. And if eight-year-old me is logical and asking what happened, then you know it's got to be pretty obviously bad. And Face Tattoo Guy is like, oh, yeah, Danielle uh, was backing out of a space when we were at the store and just uh, crashed the car. And I'm like, wait, what? What? You guys crashed my mom's car after leaving me at the park and nobody came back to get me? You guys crashed the car and then said, eh, we better go back to his house and hang out anyways and leave him at the park for three hours? The worst babysitter of all time. Like, actually the worst babysitter of all time. So here I am looking at my mom's car that my babysitter just crashed after crashing her own car. Uh, and, and I walk inside and I see Danielle on the couch and I'm like, what happened to my mom's car? Like, I'm trying to get to the bottom of this because I know that we're screwed, okay? I know that we are going to get in trouble for that giant scratch on the side of my mom's car. Because, uh, something tells me when my mom comes home and sees that, she's not gonna be logical and go, Hmm, I highly doubt that Ryan was involved in any way shape or form. No, she's gonna be pissed. She's gonna be mad, okay? She's gonna be screaming. I could be on the other side of the wardrobe and my mom would be in Narnia and I would still hear the screaming, okay? This is not going to end well. I can promise you that. And she's like, oh yeah, well, we went to the store to get some drinks and, you know, I was backing out and I didn't see the car and I just scraped it. I'm like, okay, but is, like, is the other car okay? Like, eight-year-old me is like, what happened at the accident? And Danielle goes, I don't know. We just left. So, my babysitter has now committed a hit-and-run in my mother's car, alright? Like, I, I do not understand the thought process that you're going through here when you just- you're in someone else's car, you hit someone's car, and then you go, man, better keep driving, like, it's not the end of the world, you know, worse things have happened, like, bruh! You just did a hit and run in my mom's car. And I didn't really understand a hit and run, so I was like, oh, okay, I guess you can just leave accidents. Like, that's cool. Eight-year-old me was like, dang, that's a life hack. Why does anyone stop for accidents if you could just keep driving, you know? You total a car, run into a school bus, make it do 18 flips, just keep driving. Who even cares? It's not the end of the world. It's not like anyone's going to come after you and stop you, you know? Regardless, uh, I just kind of sit on the couch and I'm waiting for my mom to get pissed. I'm just absolutely silent, which is weird for me. I like to talk a lot. And so Danielle's like, is everything okay? As she's just, you know, flirting with her boyfriend. And I'm like, my mom's gonna be really, really mad. And she's like, oh, well, you know, we should get our story straight. Like, I don't want your mom to know that I left you at the park, but maybe we should just tell her that, you know, uh, like, like something happened at the park. Somebody hit us and then they drove away. And I look at her and I'm like, I'm not gonna lie to my mom again. Like, I've lied for you enough. And She's like, oh, so you don't want me to babysit you anymore? And I'm like, I mean, look, it's not, it's not you. I like you, Danielle, but like, I can't, I can't lie to my mom. Obviously, I'm not as articulate. I'm eight, so it probably came out as like, no, but I don't want to lie. But like, you know what I mean? I didn't want to lie to my mom, but I also didn't want this babysitter to get in trouble. And this kid was the first lesson I've learned. And it's something that I think everybody needs to learn in life. So buckle up. We're about to get a serious life lesson from, uh, from, from Scrubby here, okay? Sometimes people that you like and have loyalty in your life don't have your best interest at heart. And it's okay if somebody who used to be important to you changes and is now degrading your life and making things worse to not be their friend anymore. Like, I guess learning that lesson at 8 was a good thing in the long run, but there are plenty of people that are going to be important to you and are going to be your best friends and they're going to change. And at a certain point, you have to understand that keeping them and lying for them and covering for them is not good. Like, you have to be able to live your life the way you want to. And if somebody is making you lie to your mother, it's probably a sign that they're not a good person to have in your life. <laughs> So basically this story originates like this. My friend had come from like a soccer family, like him and his siblings would play soccer on Saturdays and he had an older sister that had been on the soccer team with all these girls when she was younger and now they had kind of grown up and they were starting to be like 14, 15, the older ones were maximum 16, but because they had played soccer together for so long on their sister's team, his parents were like, oh, all these girls are so great, we've watched them grow up, isn't it so cute that they can babysit our kids now? And something that I think adults have trouble understanding is like, just because someone was a cute, good behaved little kid when they were six doesn't mean that they're still a saint when they're 16, okay? That's just really not how it works. But whatever, my friend was basically, or the subscriber was basically like, you know, my parents just trusted all these girls that they had watched grow up to babysit us. 
and a lot of these girls were really well behaved when they were eight but you know 15 16 year olds are a little bit misbehaved so one weekend they're like all right we're going out of town we're taking your sister to an out of town tournament this one friend had quit playing soccer so She's gonna watch you and your brother, all right? And my friend is like, okay, sounds good. I think he said he was 13 and his brother, I think, was like 11. So old enough where like you're kind of aware of what's going on and the girl was 16 years old who was babysitting them for the entire weekend, which I mean, is a big like first introduction to babysitting, you know? It might be better off to see if she's crazy on like a three hour night out, not necessarily opening with like watching them for an entire weekend. I feel like that's just a strong opening. Like, hello person who has never watched my children before and whose tendencies I have no idea of. You may be a person who is going to smack my kid with a fly swatter every time they try to pee, but uh, I don't know. Anyways, watch my kids for the weekend. I'll be back soon. Deuces. Like, <laughs> I, I swear, my parents did the same thing. I had a babysitter who was low-key nuts, and, like, in retrospect, did, did they just not check? Like, really? You're just gonna trust this random teenager with your kids for the weekend? That's, that's kind of, that's kind of ballsy. I ain't gonna lie. But whatever, when they're getting, like, introduced and his parents are there, the girl is obviously super well-behaved and is like, oh my god, yes, of course, being the perfect angel. And I'm telling you, dude, guys don't really have that ability. Like, if a guy is a spaz, you know he's a spaz. There really isn't a way to hide it. The problem with women, which is why crazy girls are scarier, is, like, they're way better at hiding it. And maybe that's because they're smart, you know? Like, when we were all evolving, guys were like, Ooh. Me eat deer! And women were like, I have to differentiate between berries to make sure these are not poison. So they just got smarter than us. They just got way better at hiding their crazy. You know? Like, crazy dudes, it's pretty obvious when a dude is crazy. At least I think so. I think so. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong here. What I'm, what I'm basically saying is that girls are better at hiding stuff because they're smarter than us because they didn't have to hunt deer. I don't, I don't really know where I'm going with this, to be honest. I'm just going to move on. Regardless, uh, she hides the crazy from the parents very, very well. She's like, you know, straight up masking that hoe. She's got the invisibility cloak from Harry Potter over her little crazy creature, the demons that live inside of her. She invisibility cloaked that so no one can see it coming. And uh, as soon as his parents leave, she's basically like, all right, here's how this weekend's really gonna go. I, you guys are gonna do what I say and you're gonna stay out of my way. Do you understand? And they're both kind of like, hold up, hold up, hold up. You know, when my parents were just here, you were acting all chill, saying you were gonna play Monopoly with us and, like, get us pizza. And now they're gone and you're like, listen here! This is my prison, and if any of you step out of line, I'm gonna smack you with a fly swatter. I don't know why I'm loving that analogy today, but it's, like, just what's in my mind. I think the visual of, like, a kid misbehaving and trying to sneak a cookie out of the cookie jar only for, like, a fly swatter to come down and crack his hand, I don't know why that's funny to me today, but, like, it's just what I'm envisioning, so... Whatever, she's like, no, you guys are gonna listen to me, this is how it's gonna go. And she basically says, if any of you, any of you, step out of line and, like, don't listen to me, then I'm gonna tell your parents you were misbehaved. And I don't know, like, some people are probably like, I'm not afraid of my parents, but as somebody whose parents, you know, definitely, definitely put the fear of God into me a little bit, like... If my babysitter would have told my parents that I was misbehaved, dude, and, like, had evidence for it and whatnot, it would have been low-key pretty sketch. So they're like, all right, we'll just do what she says. So she's kind of like, all right, let's just eat dinner and watch a movie. So they're eating dinner, and um, keep in mind, this is, like, a 13- and an 11-year-old. So they eat dinner together, and they're watching a movie, or they're going to pick to watch a movie. Like, they're trying to pick a movie. So they're going through all the movies, and uh, the kids are obviously like, yo, let's watch... You know, something maybe a little bit more mature, but, like, nothing nothing too crazy. They're not out here trying to watch, like, a documentary about global warming or a horror movie before they go to bed, especially, like, an 11-year-old dude. I know some people are super into horror movies. I personally am a little pansy. Like, if I watch a horror movie before I go to bed, it's just not happening, dog. Like, I will straight up just be looking at the door like, all right, at any moment, a crazy man in a mask is going to run in here, and that's just how it's going to go, Ryan. Like, that's just life. It's been a good one, but that movie was actually just foreshadowing for what happens tonight. So uh, get ready, you know, make sure you use the bathrooms. So that way you don't disembowel yourself when he runs in. And uh, let's get ready. Like, I'm not a fan of scary movies, but this babysitter decides that an 11 and 13 year old before they go to bed need to watch Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which if you've never seen, you know, if you like scary movies, I guess it's good. But like, if you're not a fan of scary stuff, it's it's a pretty damn scary movie. All right. Especially when like you're 11 years old trying to go to bed hey. all right 11 year old remember this movie's about a stranger picking up a chainsaw and just absolutely running through a neighborhood but uh good luck your windows unlocked by the way like that's basically what happens 
So they start watching it, and obviously it's pretty intensely scary, and my friend's 11-year-old brother starts crying and is begging the babysitter to turn him off. And so she's like, go to bed, and he's like, no, I'm scared, I'm scared. So she's like, fine, we're going to toughen you up. So she goes and gets a chair out of the living room and ties the kid up with shoelaces to the chair in front of the TV so he has to watch Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And this 11-year-old is like, dude, I'm terrified. Please don't do this. And she's like, well, you should have thought about that before you got scared. Like, look, you annoyed me, and now I'm making you watch this movie. So she, like, ties him to the chair, and my friend is kind of like, uh, I don't really know what to do because she is bigger and stronger than me, and I'm trying to help my brother. So... Obviously, the situation's a little bit out of control. Personally, I've babysat some people in my time, and my go-to tactic when they're like, hey, I don't like this, isn't, well, let's tie you to a chair and waterboard you, Jimmy. Like, that's never my go-to personally, so obviously this babysitter's a little bit out of control. So, like, you know, she terrifies this kid, makes him watch Chainsaw Massacre, and they try to go to bed that first night. The little brother can't sleep. He ends up sleeping with his older brother because he's terrified of, like, chainsaws he has nightmares the entire night he can't sleep very well and the babysitter is like out like a rock on the couch so the next morning you know um my friend is all exhausted and his little brother is like sleep deprived because obviously he's horrified from being up all night the night before just thinking that a texas chainsaw guy is going to come in and scare him so they're eating breakfast and the babysitter's like oh why do you look so tired and he's like well i didn't sleep because i was afraid that a chainsaw guy was going to come in and she starts making fun of this 11 year old being like oh look at this little baby this little baby who can't sleep after he watches a horror movie what a little baby and like the 11 year old starts crying because this lady who's supposed to be in charge of him and taking care of him is belittling him because she strapped him to a chair and made him watch a horror movie he didn't want to watch so he gets up and like runs to his room and she's like whatever we're gonna teach him how to not be scared of it and my friend's like okay well how are we gonna do that and she's like okay you go to your room and don't come out no matter what and he's like uh okay all right, so he goes to his room and is just not questioning it because obviously this girl is a little nuts. And what she decides to do, my friend is from Maryland, and I guess his dad had played hockey or whatever, so they had an old hockey mask in the garage, like the ones that... What's the guy? Jason? Is Jason the guy who wears the hockey mask? I hope so. I don't really like scary movies, so my knowledge might not be the greatest. I'm sorry about that. And what he hears is his brother door open and screaming in like a machine. And he opens the door to look, and the babysitter has a hockey mask on and the chainsaw from the garage and is chasing his little brother down the hallway and is saying, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. She thought that this was scaring, like... Oh, if you face your fears, you won't be scared. But let me tell you this right now. All right, that might work for like heights or, or dogs or I don't know. Things that like people are afraid of that they might just need exposure to. I'm pretty sure it's perfectly normal to be horrified of someone in a mask chasing you with a chainsaw. Like, what did you want the 11 year old to do? Ah, oh, that is right. I guess murderers aren't scary. Like, yeah, it's scary to get chased with a chainsaw by someone who's mentally unstable. Like, if this guy doesn't know you and you're chasing him with a chainsaw with a mask on and you're like, I'm helping you, why are you scared? I'll tell you why he's scared. There's a psychopath with a chainsaw chasing him around his own house and his parents are supposedly paying you to do it. Like, she is getting paid to chase this kid with a chainsaw. So finally, she like pins him in the corner of the couch and he's screaming and my friend comes out and he's like, dude, stop, stop it. Like, what are you doing? Like, you psychopath. So she stops the chainsaw and he's like, Oh, I'm trying to teach him to not be scared. And his brother is like petrified in the corner, will not come out as long as the chainsaw and mask are out. So they put it away. And this kid has like childhood trauma now. He told me, honestly, his little brother now, if there is like even a horror movie commercial on, will close his eyes and plug his ears. And he's like a grown man now. Like, that's how much that messed him up, right? So they're like, oh my God, this poor kid is horrified. He hates the babysitter now. And in the process of getting chased by a chainsaw wielding maniac, he had wet himself, which I mean, listen, and sure at your 11 is it, is it great to wet yourself probably not but when you think someone with a chainsaw is chasing after you and trying to eat you you tend to do some things that you know you might be a little bit irrational about especially when you're 11 like listen if I thought a chainsaw wielding maniac was chasing me around the house I might pee my pants and I'm a 21 year old man dude I'm not I'm not gonna out sit out here and pretend that I'm any better than that like oh I would have never pissed myself if someone was chasing me with a chainsaw I, I'm probably gonna pee my pants I'm, I'm not even gonna sit here and pretend that I'm tough. That's one thing that I hate about like some story time YouTubers do. They're like, oh, I'm the toughest. Nah, I'm straight pissing myself if, if I'm getting chased by someone with a chainsaw. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. That's okay. I'm telling you right now, do not be ashamed to piss yourself if someone's trying to kill you. 
So she starts making fun of him for it. She's like, oh, the little baby peed himself. And so my friend now stands up for his brother and he's like, come on, relax. Like you just chased him with the chainsaw. Yes, he's going to pee himself. And you know it's bad if you're defending your sibling when they peed themselves. Like, low key, if you're standing up for your sibling after they did something embarrassing, you know that it was just straight up not cool. Like, whatever they're getting made fun of for is not cool. So whatever, his parents came home that night and he told them everything after the babysitter had left and his parents didn't believe him. They were like, oh, we won't hire her again because obviously you don't like her, but you don't have to make up such crazy stories. And like to this day, they accuse him and his brother of making it up and think that they're just not coming clean about it because they're afraid to admit that they lied. Like they do not believe that this babysitter chased them around with a chainsaw to try to get them over their fear of scary movies, which just seems like a horrible idea. I'm pretty sure no therapist would sign off on that. Oh. Oh, you are afraid of people with masks on and pointy objects? Hire someone to break into your house and try to kill you. That will fix your fear. That's never going to happen. But regardless, crazy babysitter is really out there on the highest of keys. And uh, yeah. <laughs> For those of you who haven't seen the first video, I had a babysitter when I was like four called Douche Canoe Daniel who uh, stole my mom's car, locked me in a closet, just generally was not the best babysitter in the world. But the straw that broke the camel's back and got him fired is when uh, he smoked weed with a four-year-old in the room. That's right, guys. Smoked the devil's lettuce with an angel. That was me, by the way. I, I, I was the angel. Anyways, what basically happens is one night my parents are like, hey, yo, let's go on a date, you know, because my parents are dating and stuff. I, I don't really know what's going on. My parents love each other, I guess. It's kind of awkward sometimes when they start making out in front of me that, that doesn't happen i don't know why i said that but regardless they say yo douche canoe daniel can you please come over and watch our magnificent son oh my gosh one day he's gonna be a giant youtuber you just wait and see and douche canoe daniel goes no he's not he's a turd i'm gonna lock him in a closet make out with my girlfriend in a stolen car and then blame you for it somehow because that's just who douche canoe daniel does what what a silly little goofball you know just what a guy <laughs> so anyways douche canoe daniel comes over and we start hanging out just uh kind of burning time for my parents to come home home and uh, they usually came home pretty late like one or two in the morning so for the most part around like 8 p.m we were still home free for another five six hours to really just do whatever we wanted or should i say douche canoe daniel was doing whatever he wanted and i was kind of sitting there uh being neglected by the person my parents were paying to supposed to be taking care of me but that's just who douche canoe daniel was his name is douche canoe daniel for a reason not because he's a really upstanding guy his name isn't nice guy daniel or you know delectable daniel or uh, Deity Daniel. No, it's Douche Canoe because the guy was a giant inflatable douche. So Douche Canoe Daniel was obviously not super excited to be hanging out with me. And he proceeds to tell me that we're going to play hide and seek. But I'm not falling for this one again. Last time we played hide and seek, I ended up locked in a closet while you made out with your girlfriend. So I just say, hey, can I just go play PlayStation upstairs? I won't bother you. And uh, he was like, yeah, I mean, that's fine. Thankfully, I think that Douche Canoe Daniel did not forcibly lock me in a closet. All right. He just tricked me into thinking I was playing hide and seek before he locked me in a closet. Anyways. So uh, I go upstairs and I start playing PlayStation. I'm playing Sly Cooper, doing my thing. And about five minutes later, this scent just comes into my nose and it smells like a skunk. It smells like the most foul thing I've ever smelled. Keep in mind, I'm four years old. I'm not an expert on what the devil's lettuce. I whispered it so that way people don't get mad at me. Smells like. All I know is it smells a lot like a skunk and, I, and I'm not a fan of skunky smells. So, you know, when I wake up in the morning, my first thought isn't, oh man, I wish I had some skunk deodorant to really just get that scent in my nostrils permanently. Something about the stench of skunk just makes my day so much better. Gets me harder than the floor. Whatever, I smell this skunk scound. So I start sneaking downstairs. I know Douche Canoe Daniel's gonna be pissed if I'm, you know, uh, spying on him or whatever. If I just walk down there and he's doing something that he's not supposed to be doing and I catch him, he's gonna lock me in a closet or, or something along those lines. He's gonna find a way to get rid of me and make sure that I'm not gonna be annoying to him in his future plans or whatever. So I'm being a ninja, all right? I'm doing battle rolls. I've got I've got this little thing that lets me peek around corners. I got a whole spy kit. I'm basically James Bond at this point, except American and four years old. I'm like doing ninja rolls. I'm peeking around corners. I, I'm literally just a spy. I'm agents of shield, all right? Like you guys think you see me coming, but you don't. It's all a switcheroo, fakeroo. I'm spying on you from the roof when you think I'm spying on you from the window. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a spy. I'm doing karate moves. I swear for one point, I actually became Danny Phantom and went ghost. I was basically being a ninja. That's all you got to know. And I get around the corner and Danny has this little like paper thing rolled up and, and it's burning on the end and he's smoking it. And I'm like, wow, that's that's weird. I don't know what that is. Uh, I, I didn't really know what drugs were because shockingly, four-year-olds in my neighborhood were not walking around like, hey, yo, bro, let me pass that blunt, bro. You know what I'm saying? Ha, ha, hit the blunt, hit the blunt, hit the blunt. I'm 
I'm not Cyrus, all right? Cyrus is the type of kid to smoke drugs when he's four years old. I'm not. I am an innocent little angel who's never done anything wrong, to be honest with you. I, I'm, I'm basically perfect. And you know what? If you want to smoke weed, if you want to get high, that's totally fine. I'm not going to judge you. I get it. Sometimes people got to do what they got to do, have a good time, relax. But the stipulation is you can't get high when you're babysitting a four-year-old, all right? Like, that's the one rule. Literally, it, it, it's on the wrapper. Hey, please don't smoke this around f toddlers because it's probably not a good idea and uh, you won't be able to babysit them effectively. So whatever. I still don't really know what's going on. All I know is that he's smoking something and Smoking is bad because that's what my mom told me and I'm four years old and I don't really have my own experiences So I'm like dang douche canoe Daniel isn't supposed to be smoking. That's fine And at this point, I don't like douche canoe Daniel I used to look up to him. I used to think he's cool, but at this point he's locked me in a closet he He's stolen my mom's car There's not many reasons for me to think douche canoe Daniel is an upstanding guy that I'm really trying to hang out with and get to know on the weekends Right, so I, I do what any kid would do and I go back upstairs and I have this little disposable camera thing that my parents had gotten me uh, I think we went to a wedding or something and they had it because listen, I'm old, all right? When I was four, disposable cameras were still a thing. Bully me in the comments, do what you gotta do. And I did my ninja belly roll, I, I, st I slunk back down there like the absolute unit I am. James bonded my way around the world. And I said, snap, snap, crap, crap, little Daniel, I just got a picture of you hitting the devil's lettuce. That's right, big dog, you're done for out here. My mom's gonna be pissed. Oh. Anyways, so I act like nothing's going on, but but you gotta think about this from Douche Canoe Daniel's perspective. At what point are you like, dang, I should really get high with a four-year-old in the house. Like, I get it. Hey, you want to relax? You want to have a good time? That's fine. You don't do it when you're babysitting a toddler. Like, what? What do you mean? And it's not like I was a loud toddler either. I was really just trying to play Sly Cooper and hang out. I, I was not annoying. I didn't want to play with him because I didn't like him at this point. He really had no excuse at all. But regardless, that's just the type of person that Douche Canoe Daniel was. So my parents come home a, a little early. I think it was like 9 p.m., which is only about an hour-ish after Daniel had finished smoking the devil's lettuce. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. And usually when they came home at like 1 or 2 in the morning, the smell would basically be gone. But because it's only been about an hour, they walk in and they immediately know that it smells like weed. So they ask Daniel if he was smoking and he's like, no, 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 of course not. And me, being the little ninja I am, I have a devilish grin on my face, smile ready to go. I'm about to ruin this man's entire career. Your babysitting career is over, Daniel. You will never lock another kid in the closet again. What do I do? What do I do? I get my disposable camera and say, yes, he was, and there's a picture on this camera of him smoking. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, me, the legend, the master, Super Spy 69, that's me. Really went out of my way to get photographic proof that Douche Canoe Daniel was a terrible babysitter. And he calls me a liar, which is not going to help your case. Like, imagine talking to a kid's parents. He says he has photographic evidence after it smells like weed of you smoking. And then you go, your kid's a dirty liar, you little pelican. Like, what What do you think that's going to do? You think my parents are going to be hyped to hear that you think their kid's a liar? No, no, of course not. That is not going to work in your favor, Douche Canoe Daniel. But you're too stupid to understand that because you have the brain cells of two sloths furiously trying to mate. And that's not a lie. Of brain cells. I don't know if you've seen sloths, but their eyes are kind of weird because their brains are shaped weird. That's just a matter of fact statement. I, I can't help it. Sloths are just a little silly looking, and if you disagree, you can still like sloths. They're just silly looking. You can't deny that. That's the truth of the matter. Sloths are kind of silly. So, uh, anyways, my parents realized that Douche Canoe Daniel is, in fact, the douche canoe that they thought he was and uh, decided they're never going to hire him as a babysitter again. And they proceeded to start asking me if he's done anything else weird, anything else that's a little shady. And I didn't snitch for a while. But uh, basically what happened, the time my parents found out everything Douche Canoe Daniel had done, locking me in closets, literally locking a four-year-old in a closet, stealing my mom's car, everything, was in eighth grade. You see, Douche Canoe Daniel always told me that if I snitched on him, then uh, he would tell that, you know, I spilt chocolate milk on the carpet. And my mom would have killed me. I'm not going to lie, my mom really loves carpet. She's basically like carpet sexual all right that, that's what you got to know and uh, my mother you know definitely loved her carpet so I was terrified of ever saying anything about Douche Canoe Daniel because I didn't want to get in trouble because when you're a kid you're like please please don't yell at me mom I didn't mean it the chocolate milk was an accident it'll never happen again I'll never betray my family's trust for sweet sweet dairy products again all right guys stop it Stop it, please. Please don't hurt me. Please don't harm me. I'm a fragile little boy. But anyways, in eighth grade, we're talking about babysitters, and my mom starts telling her friend the story about um, Douche Canoe Daniel and the weed. So you know what I do? Obviously, I say, well, there's a lot more to it. And I tell my mom everything about being locked in closets and him stealing the car. And my mom's like, oh, my God, you didn't say anything. So I'm like, well, no, I didn't want to get in trouble. And she said, Ryan, trust me, milk is way less bad than stealing a car and, you know, taking a four year old out at one 
in the morning to make out with your girlfriend. And I was like, oh, I, I guess I didn't think about it that way. You you are correct. Douche Canoe Daniel was definitely a giant douche canoe. But after he got caught smoking the devil's lettuce, he never babysat me again. He was fired. Dunzo. Kabalish. Poopsie Don. Everything that you can say to get fired. My parents actually told his parents he got in trouble at home. He got his PlayStation taken away. And you know what that is, Douche Canoe Daniel? That right there is karma. Ladies and gentlemen, do not mess with the spy scrubby because I will get you. I am a super spy. I've been trained in the KGB, Russian intelligence, to be able to spy on you and make your life miserable if you smoke weed around me. So don't test it. Don't try it for I am Scrubby Bond. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. I was Scrubby Bond when I threw oranges and I'm Scrubby Bond now. Nothing's changed. The only thing that has changed is my work ethic and my ability to be an absolute unit. <laughs>so when I was smaller my parents decided that they needed to get us a consistent babysitter they saw some article or like news thing on TV about how it's super important for kids to have one consistent babysitter in their life for them to have you know a good role model and my parents tried their best all right they weren't always the sharpest tools in the shed but they were like oh my goodness our kids are gonna grow up to be Ted Bundy unless they have the same babysitter every time and if they don't have the same babysitter then it's single-handedly proven that they will become psychopaths like they tried their best but they were definitely a little uh, too excited to make changes sometimes and they decided that they were gonna look for a babysitter and most people when they're looking for a babysitter probably Google a website for babysitters or like you know do something relatively normal ask a family friend something along those lines uh, my parents for whatever reason decided that they just didn't love us at all and started looking on a Craigslist for a babysitter which might be the worst place to ever find a babysitter like out of every place where I would look for someone to do a job I think Craigslist Craigslist is already the least trustworthy, let alone getting somebody to watch your kids on Craigslist. Like I said, my parents tried their best, but they definitely weren't the sharpest tools in the shed. You know, ah, wh what's up, kids? This is your new Craigslist babysitter. His name's Danny. He smokes 18 packs of cigs a day, and his middle name is Patrice. Like, you know, that, that's the type of people you're probably going to meet on Craigslist. But regardless, they found this 17-year-old girl that was looking for babysitting jobs on Craigslist, and uh, I feel like using Craigslist as a 17-year-old definitely is, is not a very safe thing to do. But regardless, they find this girl, and everything seems great. She's an honor student. Student, she's good at school. She plays sports. Everything checks out and seems pretty good uh, That should have been red flag number one though because if somebody who has all these qualifications is looking for babysitting work on Craigslist It's probably because nobody they know trusts them with their kids, you know like call me crazy here But if, if the perfect babysitter is on Craigslist, you got to ask yourself Why do they have to go on Craigslist to find kids to babysit probably because they're a psychopath, you know But my parents don't think this through and they're like wow, it's perfect and uh, she comes over to babysit us. And the first time she babysits us, it's all right. Her name was uh, Juliet, and Juliet is a, a little intense. She was kind of uh, too much of a stickler for the rules. You know, there's rules that are like rules, but they're not really rules, you know? Like, oh, no cooking in the kitchen. And you're like, oh, okay, that usually pertains to the stove, so I'm gonna make some cereal. Like, my parents' rule was we couldn't cook. And, uh, you know, everybody kind of knew that just meant with the stove or the oven, like, stuff that could burn the house down, potentially, all right? We're not talking about the type of stuff where it's like, ah, yo, um, I'm gonna make cereal. Because how am I gonna ruin anything with cereal, bruh? There's never been a case of, the house was perfectly still. It was in place. Until, Timmy got the Cheerios. Crap blew up like an absolute C4 explosive. Like, that just doesn't happen, alright? So, we were just like, trying to make some cereal. And, uh, the babysitter was like, no, no, no cereal. Like, I swear, if Captain Crunch would have been in there, she would have decapitated him like an ISIS video. Like, she was a little bit too intense into following the rules. So, whatever, she's a little, a little too much, and we're not really having fun with her. And our parents obviously wanted us to have a good role model. And someone that we enjoy. They didn't want to leave us with a babysitter all the time and, like, us hate them. Because that's just awkward for everybody involved. Nobody has fun when you hate your babysitter, right? So... Whatever, uh, they had kind of told her that it was gonna be a serious gig, but when they got back that night and we all were like, oh my god, she's a crazy woman, please don't make us stay with her again, they kind of were like, oh, alright, well we're not gonna leave our kids with somebody that they hate because that's not the point of a babysitter. Imagine if that was the goal of a babysitter, was like, to be hated. She comes over, oh, what do you like, kid? Oh, you building Legos? As soon as your parents leave, she knocks them down like she-woman Godzilla. That would not be legit. That's a bad babysitter. So, our parents realizing that we really didn't enjoy the presence of her and, uh, the fact that, you know, she was kind of a crazy person that wouldn't let us make cereal or, like, watch movies with the volume over seven. Just, like, that type of stuff where you're like, uh, 
It's a little too strict for kids, you know? A little too strict. And I know someone in the comments right now, Ryan, she was just trying to follow the rules. All right, all right, Melvin. Okay, you nerd. Let's see. Have you followed every rule that's ever been given to you? No, I, I, hopefully not, dude. If you're mad that they were like, hey, this girl's a little too strict and we don't like being around her, then uh, I don't know what to tell you. You probably go the speed limit, all right? Keep living in your little bubble. Keep doing what you got to do. Get out my comment section. So the parents kind of realize that they call her and they say, hey, you know, uh, you did a great job, but we're probably not going to hire you again. It's nothing personal. We just found a better babysitter that lives closer. They tell her a lie, right? And uh, she takes it really hard, like a little harder than you would think. Almost like, you know, her boyfriend just dumped her. She's like, what? Excuse me? It is like screaming on the phone that like, you said this would be a consistent job. And they're like, well, it was the first time. We didn't really know how things were going to work out. No big deal. And I guess as she's yelling at them, arguing with the parents that the kids had a great time and she's missing out uh the dad lets it slip that the kids are the ones that said that they didn't want anything because uh she wouldn't let them like make cereal which sounds ridiculous that's not really what happened she was just overall strict but you get the idea he tells the crazy babysitter that is screaming at them that the kids didn't want her which uh probably isn't the best idea when you're dealing with crazy people the best idea is to you know let them think that they're right if you're getting ever yelled at by a crazy person here's a piece of advice you go oh my gosh i had no idea and you move on because you don't want to tell a crazy crazy person they're wrong. That's just a really bad idea. Telling a crazy person they're wrong is like telling, I don't know, your mom that she's overreacting when she's upset. You can do it. You might end up in a coffin though and it's probably not worth the risk. But what is worth the risk is heading over to the merch store down in the description and getting yourself some fantastic Christmas merch. Yeah, that's right guys. How can you feel festive without this beautiful fantastic Christmas design emblazoned on your body like a cattle? Just kidding. Please buy my merch, though. It's very cool. Uh, very swag. We'll get many girlfriends. And uh, I guess she took that very, very, very personally, because what happens next is uh, someone mentally snapping. So there's a knock on their door about 20 minutes later, and the parents open it, and it's the babysitter. And she goes, hi, can I talk to your kids for a second? And they're like, uh, we prefer you didn't. And she pushed past the parents, and the parents are like, what are you doing? She walks into the kitchen, grabs a thing of Easy Mac from the, from, like, the cupboard, and they're like, uh, okay, can you please leave? Like, we didn't invite you inside. Walks over to the microwave, puts it in for 20 minutes with no water, and hits start. And, uh, if you guys don't know what that does, trust me, I've done it myself. If you put Easy Mac in a microwave with no water, it lights on fire. And so the parents are like, what are you doing? Take that out. It's going to light on fire. She's like, no, since your stupid kids want to be able to cook, I'm making the mac and cheese. Let's see. Am I really a bad babysitter for not letting them cook? Because they would have forgotten the water. They're stupid. They're stupid kids. So I don't know what you want. Maybe I saved your house from burning down because look what's going to happen. And so they're kind of standing there and the dad's like trying to get to the microwave and she's like pushing him away like, no, no, no. And the next thing you know, uh, the microwave that is now being cooked cooked cooking this mac and cheese with no water in it bursts into flames you know exactly what's going to happen about three minutes in and the parents are like what are you doing you're gonna burn the house down and she's like well maybe i do need to burn the house down so your little brats can learn a lesson that it's rude to get people in trouble and make them lose their job just because i wasn't fun and i didn't let them cook so let's see how they like cooking huh let's see how they like it when their house is cooking and so the microwave is like on fire at this point right the stuff inside of it is on fire and so the dad basically at this point who was trying to be nice shoves the girl out of the way like pushes her into the fridge and she's like assault assault crazy babysitter girl that just broke into their house and is lighting their mac and cheese on fire is screaming about how apparently the dad is a jerk for like pushing her out of the way but uh you kind of walked into their house and lit something on fire i'm pretty sure you're the jerk in this situation like no one's gonna go oh my god i'm totally on your side he shouldn't have pushed you out of the way when you're trying to might light light lit light light his microwave on fire woman so he opens it and sure enough there's flaming mac and cheese sitting there which uh, I don't really know what your plan is now. Like, yes, the microwave door is open, and now there is flaming pasta in your face, gentlemen. Uh, I don't really know what you're going to do now. Like, realistically, what do you do once you've uh, <laughs> got the flaming microwave in your hands? Like, oh, here, I've, I've just got this random amount of... Of flaming stuff in my hands. It's like a hot pocket, but really hot, you know? Like, somebody left it in a little bit too long. That thing was cooking. You know how it be sometimes. And they're, like, trying to put it out, but it's very hard to put out flaming mac and cheese in a microwave. So, finally, they get it out, and they're like, what are you doing, you crazy person? And she's like, if I don't get this job, then you don't have the right to have a house. Which is a really weird way of connecting the dots, all right? Like, usually with paint by numbers, no green goes by blue, yellow goes by red. It makes a little bit of sense, but you're like, ah, you fired me as a babysitter, so I'm gonna burn your house down. I'm not 
really sure how these two things are connected, but you're a psychopath, right? So the parents obviously call the cops, and uh, 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 the girl basically tries to explain that school's been really hard on her, that she's like uh, an honor student, and this was going to be her fun outlet, and when she got fired, she had a mental snap. And by mental snap, I mean breaking into their house and purposely lighting Easy Mac on fire in the kitchen to try to burn down their house. Just a typical Tuesday type of stuff, you know? Nothing too wild. Typical Tuesday. Uh, if your typical Tuesday consists of burning down houses, please do me a favor and stay extremely far away from everything I own because I'm really just not trying to uh, catch my house on fire. It's nothing personal, you know? If, if you want to burn your house down, that's on you, but please don't do it to me. 